What is up and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Got a great show for you with my guy, Tim O'Keefe. He's on the mics again. Great show. Talked about a lot of things. But first, check out our sponsors, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. You can find them at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com as well as on Instagram. Check them out. Lexan Moto has an intercom system for you. The all-new Lexan G16 is the group rider's long-awaited answer to an affordable intercom system. With a 16-rider comm system, Bluetooth 5.0, and music sharing, it'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the Lexan team geared at making motorcycle rides and travel more enjoyable. Check it all out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And give them a follow on Instagram at lexanmoto. Thundermax has your EFI-equipped Harley-Davidson covered with their high-quality auto-tuning ECMs. I have been running their computer on my road glide for over 40,000 miles, and it continues to give me the optimal performance out of my engine. Paired with a touring oil cooler fan, my bike has been running strong and at a desirable temperature. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE to save yourself 10% off and as always, give these guys a follow on Instagram at Thundermax EFI. I switched all my lighting on my Rogue Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of their looks and their improved visibility I get from the Shark Tooth headlight. And I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options they have for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offer 530 lumens of bright white running light, which are the, be- the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least, the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of design to add that finishing touch and all products are plug and play. NAMS custom cycle products since 1999 have been offering American made wiring products for all things V-Twin and Badlands for over 30 years have been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop the FL2020 offer code which gives you free shipping on orders over $100. Check them out. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one-stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded. With in-house dyno tuning and parts and accessories, also check out teamdreamrides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider and if you're short on cash you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products teamdreamrides.com all you need is a job and a bank account and while you're at it give john and the team a follow on instagram at dreamridesjohn paint huffer metal flake has been with our podcast since day one and i've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now You can get started down this custom paint path with many must-have items in the custom paint process at PaintHuffer.com. And you can save yourself some coin by using the FastLife25 offer code. And last but not least, you can get a lot of inspiration by checking out all the amazing paintwork created with PaintHuffer products at PaintHufferMetalFlake on Instagram. And we're back, so thank you guys for checking out this podcast Uh, Really excited for you to hear it. Tim O'Keefe is a fantastic, one of my favorite photographers in the world. He has a badass magazine, Stag Magazine. He's here located in the DFW area. Uh, Hopefully you guys are following him in the Stag Mag on Instagram. And uh, yeah, let's get right into this podcast. Here we are, Tim O'Keefe. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Pod. I, got, I don't trust my brother sometimes. <laughs> I got to give him shit. That was a, a, I'm a... I'm a very controlling a, person yeah, when it comes a to creativity. It's a lifetime of not trusting me. You're all... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time with it. Yeah, we're all good, dude. Sometimes... Uh, Did you check the YouTube video? Yeah, it's good. Audio is good. So you can turn the cameras on now. You know what? Right. Hold on. Let me run to the restroom real quick. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, so we're starting our podcast without our podcast guest. There you go. <laughs> Do we start? Are we on? Yeah, no, you can fine. go, though. Okay. You're good. Yeah, I think everything's all set up. Is it is it loud enough? Yeah. Cool. 
Because I, I was listening back to the last one we did, and it just seemed like it was a little too quiet. Like, when you're listening to the car, uh-huh. like, I just couldn't get it loud enough. Which one? The uh, Craig? Yeah. Oh. With uh, Mr. Tarpon Turbo. Yeah, sometimes it's, uh, peop- like, people have to go into their settings on their phones to turn up all the volume yeah. controls. But the problem is when you record it too loud, then it, it, uh, all it the peaks shit. Yeah. really bad. But see right here, like... So when you go to the level in the little green bars, that's that's the optimal level where you want to be at. So yeah. that that would be like that's the best place to be. And so when we're at thirty five, we barely hit it. But this one it stays there pretty much constantly. Well, I usually put it at thirty five, but then I have those knobs down just a little bit, and you can kind of raise them up a little bit yeah. to kind of you know fill that gap more or less. But it'll sound fine. But it's also like I'm used to recording and then putting it into the garage band or whatever and then adding gain and, you know, limiters on it. Yeah. As opposed to recording it the way we're doing now where it's like 100% the way it's going to be. Yeah, that's why it's, I'm, I'm trying to – because you're right about recording at a quieter volume before you edit it. Yeah, you like, taught me that. <laughs> yeah. But since we're just going straight in, man, I want to make sure all this shit's good. So, uh, yeah, it's tough, man. <laughs> it gets you. Checks your cardiovascular health. That's right. Yeah, you know, like our YouTube channel is not super big, right. but it's like um, me. I, I've never really gave two shits about YouTube until I'd probably say about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than a year ago. I started. Uh, I think, Jesse, wasn't it your little TV I ended up getting? Yeah, I gave you that little tiny one. It was like a 32-inch. And I, like, put it above my little workstation. Right. And so, um, like, I just sit there and watch videos. And it's, it's like, it's, it's crazy because we're all used to listening to music and listening to podcasts and shit like that while we're working. But, but then the visual. Yeah, not the visual aspect. Right. And there's just so much content on YouTube that, like, I would... So, like, this whole last year, I've, like, really doubled down on photography and trying to, like, learn the those skills. aspect. Yeah. Right. And so, <clears throat> been doing so is because I sit there and watch videos of all these people talking about cameras and, and settings and, and editing and, like, Lightroom and Photoshop and all these different things. And it's because I had a TV sitting there to watch all day long while I'm airbrushing or sanding or whatever. Right. That's just kind of, like, opened that whole world to me visually. Right. You know what I mean? So, now I... I fucking stay on this thing all day long. Like I have a huge TV of, above this desk now, and right. you know it's just uh, there's just so much content on there. I mean, like we talked in our last podcast, I was listening to it earlier to kind of catch up and remember. That way we don't go over the same shit again. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's tough because we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I mean, we've that was a hours. heavy time for me though. I yeah. mean, it was right after our grandfather passed. Yeah, yeah. so it was a uh, a lot of a lot of reflecting, and I don't I don't even know. I mean, that was the first family member we'd ever lost so it was kind of like a how do you how are you supposed to feel you know what i mean kind of vibe and uh you know i was struggling with social media like i was like had this real polarizing love hate relationship with it as opposed to right now where i'm like ah we're pretty good yeah our relationship's pretty (laughs) solid right now so Yeah. How's it been for you, man? Like, it's been a minute. You know, yeah, it's uh, well, as far as like Just social media life, in, man. in general, it's <clears throat> it's the same. Like, yeah. it really is kind of, uh, you know, the magazine, yeah. working on the magazine. I've, I've gotten, you know, I go through, so it's kind of like motorcycles, photography, guitars. Yeah. That's the... That's your three vices. Yeah, there really is kind of like where I... <laughs> Uh, you know, my focus is always in there. Yeah. So, so right now I'm like fucking nutty guitar shit. Just like noticed. I'm really, really like yeah. super guitar. Like, like, you know, and, and Eddie Van Halen just yeah. uh, that it's really strange. Cause I didn't, it was probably, I mean, I was a huge Randy Rhodes fan, mm-hmm. you know, Ozzy Randy Rhodes. And I know in Southern California, it was Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was, I didn't really care. When I was big pro Randy Rhodes, I wasn't a huge Eddie Van Halen fan. Yeah. I loved Van Halen, the band, but I wasn't, as far as guitar wise, I wasn't 
but the thing is, is that like, I didn't, I didn't realize until recently that how fucking much like Eddie Van Halen really, I, I really started reflecting on, um, what he meant to me. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I don't have a bunch of guitars. I have a telly, I have my Les Paul and I have a Kramer. Mm-hmm. I don't have, I don't listen to fucking Ozzy. I don't listen to Randy Rhodes anymore. I not really, but I've, I've never stopped listening to Van Halen mm-hmm. tone, the sound of, you know, this grind or these, these sounds that I, that I've all, that are just hardwired into what I like. Mm-hmm. It's Van Halen, you know I mean? It's, yeah. So it's really strange. You, you take something for granted and then when, and it's not like I, you know, I, I'd never, I, I've seen Van, I saw Van Halen for the first time in, in 1983 and that was like, that was it. Yeah. I was like, fucking Van Halen fucking <laughs> rules, man. Yeah. And then I saw him the next year and I, so I only saw him twice, but I was like, wow, what an asshole I was to not like, what was the deal with, you know, that it, he was a big part of custom paint world too with his guitar his yeah, style well, you know you know the, I, this is the thing is is i you, the whole custom is like you really it's fucking simple like it's not like when you break down what that guy did like yeah. very few people do very few people you know amp wise uh his guitar like the way the shit sounds like mm-hmm. it's not it's just from your head like you take it from your head, you're like, oh, I want this to sound this way. Like uh, there's a story. So he has his, you know, he has this amp, this 68 Plexi, I think is what it was. And, you know, everybody knows these stories, but it just, it, it, it trips me out. Cause I have, I've been using YouTube and going back yeah. and looking at people doing all these interviews and shit. And the, so it was like, oh, I, I, I don't know what part of like you're, so you're listening, he's listening to this, he's playing, playing, listening, playing, playing, listening. And at some point, you know, people know the very act story, but I think like when you, just the idea of like, you go to, you know, you go to a hardware store or something and say like, you know, do you have something that regulates power? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got the whatever, whatever, very act. So he takes this thing home and starts fucking with the voltage that's mm-hmm. going to the amplifier. I also didn't realize that he he ran his, and it makes perfect sense. If you put a phaser, if you put effects in front of the amp, they 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 really change because it's amplified. So it's coming through the front of the amp, yeah. And the tubes, the amp itself, are amplifying those effects. So I saw a diagram of the initial his initial setup. Well, maybe from like the, you know, the early recordings Mm -hmm. and he's got his fucking effects. You know, now we have now modern amps has like FX loops. They have loops. So, and they're in the back of, they put the effects in the back of the amp. What he did was fucking ran. So he ran his guitar. He ran a, a, a single, uh, uh, equalizer into the front of the amp and from the fucking speaker cable, he put his effects and then ran that to the cabinet. Mm. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's just... And when you look at, like, old... So he's, like, essentially making his own FX loop. made an FX loop. Yeah. Well, I mean, and who's to say he isn't responsible yeah, for, for the somebody idea d- taking that and the pioneering the it. Loop. And yeah. So thing. these are things. The paint, that paint job, it's like... So he, he <clears> it, it's a black strat, starts out a black strat. Uh... Then it turns into a, he paints it white and ha- has the black lines on it and mm-hmm. the little squigglies it's and usually shit. just like one or two black lines as like the, you know. Yeah, well, there. I mean, it kind of, yeah, ha- the hash is up, black pick guard, and then it turned, then like apparently people started copying that, so he paint, oh. he put some red on there. I didn't know that. And it ends up becoming then, you know, it's like he was a, clearly he was a big PAF guy, which is Gibson's original humbucking pickup. Mm-hmm. And they have a very distinct sound. So now, you know, people drop in these super high distortion or higher output yeah. pickups to get these heavier sounds. But it's, it's just mind boggling to me, the shit that like, you're just, he's just a fucking, you know, kooky mad scientist really fucking around with. Well, I mean, like think about like sounds. that time of that era. So you're talking about 
70s roughly this yeah he, this is like know? 74 75 76. just everything's new though like they're yeah. they're you know they're for for a, a a a twist to bring it like in comparison to custom paint right in that same era paint was primitive and right. so to do custom with it it was like we look at it now like there's no fucking way i would even try to do it because it's like the paints were hard to deal with yeah and i imagine like you had to get kind of crazy and nerdy in a sense, to find all these different ways to add these different effects. No question. And like, all right, let me try this here. Let's see what that sounds like or whatever. It, it's the same thing that they had to do to, to for Paint World to uh, create what we do now, which is kind of easier for us. You know, like you have with guitars, you have programs now. And then, you know, even like the synthesizers or whatever the hell. I'm just using words you said. I don't know what it right. means. So, uh, <laughs> so he's looking at me because yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I know. Jesse plays guitars right. and has a band and stuff. But, um, you know, like I see that, the, you know, like I, I'm a huge fan of like Led Zeppelin and those kind of early right. bands. And when I was younger, that 70s, even like Black Sabbath and Ozzy, and right. even, even like some of the more hair bands of the 80s, man, I'm just like, I was just turned off by it. Right. But now as I get older, I'm like, fuck, man, that shit's actually dumping. It's good. It sounds it's a lot, good. It's a lot more raw. And a lot of those dudes were, like, obsessed. Yeah. You know? They were obsessed with, with making, you know, their own sound, their own their own ways. They were all pioneers of what we all do now. Yeah. In a sense. And it's like, to me, now, it's like, okay, growing up as a kid, I grew up into, like, I like hip-hop. I like, you know, pop music, da 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 But then as I became more and more, like, music-focused in my life and, like, started playing guitars and doing all this shit, you start to appreciate, like, just the rawness of, like, music from back then simply because of the fact that it's, like, they did so much with so little, and they figured that shit out as mm -hmm. opposed to, like, now we have 20 different pedal effects and 20 different things we can do and put on our shit and, like, why doesn't it sound that good? You well, this know? is this is this is the quintessential thing. Is I so I read this uh, this it was Steve Vai talking about. So Steve Vai, uh, Dave David Lee Roth gets Steve Vai and I mm -hmm. think Billy Sheehan. He forms a band at the and then leaves Van Halen. Uh, he so after after that shit falls apart. Uh, Eddie Van Halen reaches out to Steve Vai. Uh, <clears throat> they become friends. Steve Vai, uh, so Steve Vai was playing. Eddie stopped by his house. And so he's got his shit on. You know, he's playing, he's got his guitar strapped on and he's hooked up to his rig. And he was, Steve Vai in telling this story is like, look, uh, it was, this is m my signature. Like, this is my shit. Like, yeah. he said in, he said, and Eddie was like, hey, man, I've been working on this. I've been working on this shit. Let me show it to you real quick. And he said, so I handed Eddie my guitar. And he said, it was the, Eddie's sound is called the brown sound. Mm -hmm. He said it was the brown sound. Like it was literally fucking, uh, Eddie Van Halen's playing through my shit. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like Van Halen 1, Van Halen 2, Van Halen 3. Yeah, mm -hmm. because so that's the, who he is, that's his nuances. The because way the that thing is, is, is yeah. that, that no, this shit sounds kooky to people, but tone mm -hmm. is actually in here right. and here. Like yeah. So the thing is, is I've, I've used that as an analogy, talking with people about music all the time. Like I'm like, Eddie Van Halen could come grab your shitty Aria Pro 2 and plug into a shitty pig nose, and I guarantee you he's going to twist shit up, and it's gonna sound, and then he does eruption, and it's gonna sound yeah. almost like the fucking album. Yeah. Well, that that could be said because about any artist, and any yeah. and picking up any tool. It's, it literally is the exact same thing with anything, and that this, but this is the this is the shit that I really, really, really love is is that we're encoding. In some, you know, in a very esoteric way, every helmet you paint, every bike you paint, you're encoding all of your emotions. The mm -hmm. shit that you're going through, dark or light, heavy, uh, you know, happy, whatever it is, you're encoding it in that piece of work. And so that's the thing is, is when people see it, they're like, man, I don't know why, but I really like that. Yeah. And then they'll look at something else you did, and it isn't, you could be like, 
I did the same shit, and it's the same color palette. Yeah. But people like this, and they don't like this. Yeah, it just resonates with them on a exactly different, right. different That's level. That's exactly what it you is. You know, just yeah. like how, how like, B.B. King, you know, his playing, like, people over the years have all day try to replicate it, you know, and he really didn't have any effects or anything much like mm-hmm. that, but it was no. just, like, his his fingers and the way that he would play the notes and, the like, you know... It, it's kind of like you just put soul in everything you do and you can never match yeah, another person's soul, energy. soul comes from setting, though. You know what I mean? Like no. a lot of the, well, See, not, think, not setting, but the setting of your life. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know right, right. Yeah, right. Yes, right. So like, you know, what you just said, you know, that's something that I've been trying to uh, relay to customers of mine because at at 10 o'clock at night at, or, or 9 or 10 or whatever time it is, whenever I come home from the shop and, you know, I kiss my wife, we, we make dinner, we hang out. And then I go in the garage and I got my table and all my markers and shit and I start drawing and maybe I'm listening to music or a podcast or the washer going, (laughs) you know, whatever it is. It's like, I feel like that, that intimate time is now being put into this design, which then is later being translated into these paint jobs. And so I always have like a much deeper connection to the job, to the helmet or the paint job I think customers do at first, and I've been trying to find a way to relay that to them so they can understand that, yo, man, this thing means a lot to me. So if I paint this helmet for you, Tim, and you wanted it, and it's everything you wanted, but then two months you sell it, I'm like, yo, man, like, yeah, I made this. You look, you see it as like I just bought a helmet, or it's a I dollar just, value. Yeah, it's, and a, it's not, and it's yeah. To <clears throat> me, it's like this is I. I want to. Th- I think. A, a buddy of mine was telling me about knife making, right? And I, we've been wanting to have, uh, you know, right. Nick on here for yeah. a minute. You know what I right. mean? Because it's it was a good analogy. He's like, man, like a, a, a handcrafted knife can take you forever to get one because of the long line and, and the amount of effort they put into building it. Right. But it becomes an heirloom for you Well, the and thing, too, is it's physical. It is a – that is a – it isn't – I think people – one of the – a catastrophic fucking – failure in modern society Mm -hmm. is social media social media makes people think that shit just fucking magically appears shit that you people want like if you want it there's a reason why you want it you know you want it because it means something there are a lot of fucking people that like it they just want it because everybody else wants it. And yeah. those are the people that buy the helmet and they're like, oh man, I've got X number of thousands of dollars wrapped up in this. I need it for, to buy some other fucking cool thing. So I'm going to sell it. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I try to stay the fuck away from people. I genuinely try to stay away from people like that because they have an effect on your life. Like, yeah. you, you know, I just really want to be around people that, or surround myself around people that that understand that like I think creative people you know they understand like there's someone hits you up hey man what's your paint formula fuck off dude like it's not <laughs> I give you the paint formula go ahead and paint a fucking helmet yeah. that looks like mine like so when someone says they just I don't know. There, you know, I occasionally will get the a request like, "Hey, so what's the, you know, how do you make it look like that?" And I think like, by fucking feeling it, dude. That's yeah. how you make it feel. That's how you make it look like that. Like you don't. If so, for me, like if images, I appreciate when someone says like, "I when I see your photos, I know it's your photo." Yeah. Like that's. It isn't because I do the same fucking thing to every photo it's because i really try to relate to each photograph individually like if i shoot like when i shot britta i I try to associate i try to uh connect with that Mm -hmm. you know one i know to me like so shooting somebody is one aspect of it Mm -hmm. you know and then working on it is really where like I, you know, I crank up the music and I, I, it's really more of, you know, my, like I can do something, someone sitting there occasionally, like I'm shooting someone and they're like, can we work one right now? You know, I don't yeah, like you doing that. Shit. Quick on there. Yeah, yeah, I can do, I can sit and do it. 
but it's not the same. Like later that night or at some point, I'll go back and. So what, what would you say? Would you think that you're putting more of your soul into the editing process or into the actual point and shoot process? Well, it's tough because the thing is, is so like people now, like they don't, uh, they don't understand what it's really mm -hmm. shooting people is so as a base level you have to have an understanding so the base level for you would be understanding the chemistry mm -hmm. understanding how like you know how much hardener how much you know yeah. you, you have to understand how the chemicals react that's the that's the fucking yeah. baseline like you have to know that otherwise you get fucking orange peel or you have yeah. all these chemical reactions so for me, it's knowing how to expose, you know, it's like, oh, I want shorter depth of field, so I change the f-stop. I want fucking to let more light in, I do that uh, two ways, f-stop, or if, if the f-stop is where I want it, then I have to figure out, like, okay, the f-stop's where I want it, but I'm still not getting enough light in, so then I change the film speed. Mm -hmm. The film speed then lets more light in, yeah. but the more light I let in. So these are the things that, like, the baseline stuff that you have to have the working understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Then once you have that, then we're talking about like me connecting with you when I'm photographing you. So, mm -hmm. you know, what people are, what, you know, an, I, an example would be <clears throat> that I'm shooting you like, and they don't say anything. There's no direction. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not comfortable. Like they just don't know what they're looking for. Oh, as far as like a, as a photographer, uh, directing, directing, yeah, directing the person. Like, so when I'm shooting you, I'm going to say like, drop that show. Like when I look at you, so right now, just looking at you in this room, I'm looking at the way light is, yeah, is, you know, sculpting you basically like that photography to me is, is always an image, uh, sculpted by divine light. Mm -hmm. Like. Light to me is the, I mean, when you break down light and lightness and darkness, like yeah. light and the absence of light, you get into, you know, I think this is why psychological uh, photography is a really psychological yeah. thing. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I just, for me, like directing and the ability to direct. So the connecting, so I connect, mm -hmm. we connect. And I'm interacting with you. I'm not just clicking the button. Yeah. yeah. It isn't just like click, 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 click. Yeah, click, you want to get click, like click, people click. comfortable and, and make sure that's, that they're that, not over posing or overdoing. You want, I don't, you want yeah. natural <clears throat> Honestly, energies. Honestly, for me, like as, as the person who's creating the imagery, I, I want it to be a dance between you and I, but it is a, it's a controlled thing. Like yeah. it isn't. You can see that experience in your work. You know, now that, now that I've, spent so much time this year on YouTube and like behind the camera lens. Right. Um, I've, I, I, I can look at your work. I can always come back to your work and go, Oh shit, I see something else here. I missed. Right. You know what I mean? And it, and a lot of it is like maybe the directing because you know, my wife lets me take pictures of her a lot of times, right. but I, I don't know how to direct. So right. that's that learning curve of, but also I don't know if my focus is really a, about people. You know what I mean? I'd like for it to, you know? well, see, that's the thing is, is you, this is so when you when you learn to when for me, what happened was, is I started shooting. I mean, I've 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 worked with a camera for a long time, but when I started using it as a as a an, an art artistic expression, yeah. I should say. So I started shooting landscapes in like Yosemite or Point Lobos. This was all in California, yeah. various places, Ferndale. I would go up to cemeteries and. Um, the, I, I, I found spirit. I was looking for something. See, this is the thing is, is that the, the breakdown is, is that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm shooting you, if I'm shooting your bike, if I'm shooting that helmet, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm looking for something. I'm looking to transcend what yeah, it, yeah. what it is like, you know, it appears to be, you know, carbon fiber and this and whatever, but like, what is it fucking really, you know, mm -hmm. what, I, you know, so I think what you would find is, is that, well, let me go back. So the, 
I found spirit mm -hmm. in these these landscapes. And I was like, so where do people fit into this? Like, mm -hmm. where is the, you know, where do people fit into this? So I started looking for spirit in people. And that was where the, that was a huge transition for me. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were highly controlled. They were more painterly. These are the first yeah. portraits that I started doing were, they were shot with a four by five camera, which is the old, you know, like you use a focusing cloth yeah. over your head. And <laughs> yeah. It's a big, you know, it's a, the four by five is a camera about this big. And then there's an eight by 10 camera that's fucking huge. So, yeah. but they make a four inch by five inch negative and an eight by 10 negative. Yeah. So you have fucking super, super clarity. Like yeah. Really, really nice clarity. Um, but that work, I started, you know, I really got comfortable with, you know, looking at people, you're just, you're looking. So when you're looking through the lens, you're looking at all of the relations. Like I'm looking at like the relationship right now between you and the doorway and the yeah. curtain and the light over here. So these are, these relationships all, and when I, when I move, if I start to move around, like that's, that's the thing is, is that, yeah. you know, inexperience would have you stay in one place. And, and, and your focus is in one place. Yeah, you know, that's, I, get, I can see that. So what happens is, is the more comfortable you get, you move around, you shift your perspective and you're looking for new relationships. Like you're looking for the relationship instead of me wanting you, like with this black behind you, your face pops. If I bring you over here towards the light, you're going to be backlit. And maybe I want to highlight over here. These are things that like, for me, like I'm really, you know, I, I like working. I, you know, I can shoot studio stuff very well. I yeah. mean, <clears throat> but to me, I feel like anybody can do that when you're, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> you can't, yeah. you will be able to. Yeah, the yeah. thing is, is it's experience. And I have a fair amount of experience shooting in a studio. Yeah. But the thing is, is when, so when you, when you do location work, you're, you have to work with the light or mm -hmm. the lack of light. Like that shit is, yeah, that's how you really. So th one of the things is, is that I shoot obviously most of my stuff at my house. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you finish an image, when someone sees it and they're like, dude, I can't fucking believe that we're in your backyard. Like this doesn't look or feel like I'm in your backyard. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's good. Cause we're not, we can be fucking any companies that spend a large lot. You know, it's like, Oh, we're shooting because of the pandemic shit is completely different. But a lot of times you'll shoot in, you know, they'll shoot in Florida. Mm -hmm. They'll shoot in California. They'll shoot in, you know, they, they're going to locations to shoot. Yeah. And these companies used to spend crazy money to go on location. And you just, it isn't about the fucking location. I yeah. and I say the same thing to people all the time. Well, I've got this killer location. And I'm like, are we shooting the location or are we shooting you? Because, you know, I don't give a fuck where it is. Yeah. Like, it doesn't. Oh, I, I can set you on the side of a fucking shitty ass office building and we'll still fucking kick ass because it's not about the office building. Mm -hmm. For me, I understand that a lot of people, they're like, you know, that the the uh, background or the wherever they are inspires them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only looking to be inspired by you. And yeah, that's it. Like. Even if we're shooting clothes, like if, if what I'm, if my focus is, you know, if you're a clothes rack and my focus is to shoot the clothes, it's still the clothes. Like, I don't care if like you, you blow, it's like, oh, we're in, we're in Miami and you know, there's stucco buildings and different mm -hmm. colors and shit like that. You can fucking do that. Like you don't have, I feel like that type of photography becomes, um, more of the, just like the social media photography, you know what I mean? Like the, it the has stuff, be, it's absolutely become that the thing, stuff yeah. that you just kind of, you, you know, like you're, you're just content, you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't, you know, one thing that I've been, 
you know, we talked about this in the last podcast a little bit, but the idea of actually physically having a photo that was either shot by someone of you or your family or whatever, just right. man, like this, just like that tangible magazine that you hold in your hand, like having this photo where it's not like you can quickly swipe to the next one. Like right. you have to put this somewhere. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And so it, to me, it, it, it becomes a, a different relationship with the, the image or that experience in that image whenever I'm holding it and I can't just, I'm not swiping through my phone looking for it. Like right. it's, it's right there on the wall right. or it's by my nightstand or some shit like that. So how do you, you know, I, I've been talking with a lot of friends that are, you know, photographers or amateurs or however you want to like classify it. But like everybody's looking for a way to use photography now, uh, you know, it's like to get people to, they all want it. Right. But they don't value it. Right. If that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Well, see, the thing is this, is it so like I used to go into galleries uh -huh. with this art that I was, I mean, these images. So there are 16 by 20, 16 by 20 images matted 22 by 28. I would take this work into a gallery and they'd be like, oh, we don't show photography. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the idea is this, is that like, I understand that not everybody can paint, anybody can take a photograph. That's, that's, but see this, that's to your point, I believe. I mm -hmm. think it's like you just, for some reason, we feel that anybody can do it. Yeah, well, like we just don't value it as much as, right. as it should be right. because it's so, there's so much of it. Right. You know? Well, well yeah. and it's, and, and let's face it, our phones now are, Apple, Apple is spending all of their, they've got the operating system down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're spending all of their time. Trying to make these cameras better. Make so they the cameras take like in the video. half of the workout yeah. for most people. Right. right. Well, that's the thing is, is that's what for them, you know, it's like, oh, dude, like you and I are the same. Like, look, here's my photo. <clears throat> okay. Respectfully, fuck off. Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, that's not the way I want to bond with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. As a I, mutual under, peer when you well, just got is, a phone. And it isn't, it isn't, I don't mean that in an elitist way. What I mean that is, is let's not use, let's not start the conversation like that. Like, let's mm -hmm. talk about how we really bond. Because to me, like, this shit is very fucking personal. I mm -hmm. don't, like, the stuff I shoot, like, it's, it's just personal. Like, yeah. I really care about it. It's not, uh... You know, it's not just a set of titties and, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just some girl. Like, I really try to tell people, like, look, you know, and I'm not a fan of, like, people sending their T-shirts to big-titted chicks. Like, it's just yeah. all this, yeah. it really is just <laughs> this giant fuck fest to me. That's the way I look at it. I look at it like, surely we can do something better with our time than this. Like, yeah, what, I, what I've noticed about that, you know, like I've, I haven't been as vocal lately about like the, that part, but that like huge titted chick with the shirt and like half, you know, just unrealistic, if, if you will. Like at one point in my life, I was like, fuck, that's fucking hot. But as I get older, just like that music that right. now is resonating differently. Now I, I look at like, which has always been one of my biggest things I love about your photography is the, um, just the, just like that chick might have an A cup, but right. like, God damn, she's doing something for me. You know, like that, that feeling yes. you get from the photo, like, right. and it's not so, it's not like this horny lustful, like, Oh, I got to pull my dick out There's, right now. Kind no, of vibe. Exactly. You know? Right. And, but that, that is a, that, that's a valid point. Like the, in it, to me, like I, I, it's all sexual to me, like sexual tension and chemistry and energy is all very, very real. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to me, I think that like, we want to, uh, I want to convey that. Yeah. But I also want there to be like, I, I don't like you're saying, I'm not looking to have that. You're only response like yeah. i want you to be like i feel kind of fucked up by like <laughs> being turned on by this yeah. what the fuck is the deal i'll tell you the deal i thought about it yes yeah. yeah, like, i'm trying to make you feel fucked up about feeling fucking turned on by that like, and I, I'm, I feel like like what you do really well is so we see you know chicks with the shirts and the big titties all day right you know and that's just kind of like candy 
you know, what you do is you take that and then you turn it into like a like a, a real a real thing. Like you take it deeper, so it turns into more of like there's more thought there. You know, it's not just like oh, those are fucking nice tits. You know, yeah, it's, so, it's, well, it's, I certainly hope to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I hope there, that that's what you can see. Are you can getting. see the depth in your photography. You can see yeah. the emotions. You can feel what it you, like. You're doing what you're supposed to do, which is capturing. The energy, the vibe, the soul, whatever, right. you know? I feel like it's more real photography. And I, like I said, as I started going, like, one of my biggest things this year was, like, all right, we got a fucking pandemic, right? So right. <laughs> I want to come out of this thing with, like, better somewhere, right. you know? And I was like, well, you know what? I, I've always been – what happened was I think what really made me – I've always had a camera, but it had, like, a Nikon, just a, uh, you know, crop sensor camera. Right. But as we started building this and then getting into these cameras and trying to get this stuff set up and all the videos I was watching, I was like, man, I want a, I want a nice camera. I, I hit you up about it a couple yeah, right, times. Right. And I was like, man, I want a nice camera. And then, like, I never shot with a full frame before. And I was like, oh, shit, like, I, this is amazingly better quality, Yeah, you know, to it work with. It makes a huge difference. It really does. But so I started following, you know other like lots of photographers whether in, in, of all different kinds like people that shoot um more product photography people that shoot you know landscapes people that shoot like those big titty chicks that we see on instagram right. like i'm gonna follow the photographer and i see certain ones that like always got some naked chick in their stuff and i'm like oh that's you know as a man i'm like yeah I, i'm into that right obviously right. but um like i didn't i didn't see a, i didn't see photography in it Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just saw like, oh, take your shirt off, lay on that bed, look interesting. Yeah. Look confused. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, see, like, I don't no even, direction. I think that I, and that, so we, what you just said is key. No direction. It's yeah. like you actually, what you said before that is, would be giving direction. And I don't think there's any direction. I think what's happening now is, is people, they're looking through their phone their camera, whatever it is that they're capturing images with, and they're, they don't know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. They don't, but that's kind of fucking analogous to like their life. Like they yeah. don't know what they're fucking looking for. They want people to like their images like <clears throat> somebody else's, you know, shit, but. But this is, this is where it all gets construed, if you will, or, or fucked up, if you will, is it, because it is titties and they're big and they're you can kind of see through her shirt or whatever the case may be right all these horny ass men start following it so now this photographer that that really isn't as skilled as his uh following would show or would would, right. would kind of say yeah it kind of like it, it changes the uh perspective of what is photography what is it really and that's kind of where it gets kind of you know, like, like why I like to have you on here to talk about this type of stuff because there there should be a different a difference between like that guy who is just like looking for the biggest titties on Instagram. Actually, you know the thing is, is what they're looking for are followers. Exactly. They're not looking for fuck. They're they're looking to me for the wrong shit. Mm -hmm. Like you're someone's uh, the number of likes. It's funny. So like you know, I was. I still have these fucked up feelings about Instagram yeah. and, you know, whatever. But they, they, who knows whether it's the, I got a, I got a thing saying like, a, will you take this uh, survey? And it wasn't just a normal survey. Like it was basically giving me an avenue to vent about like, what are the issues? Basically, it was like, what are the issues that you have with Instagram? Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you what I think. Copy like, and paste. I've been writing Not that anybody down. gives any, you know, nobody probably even fucking saw that. It was like, you know, a, a, giving me a fucking pacifier or something, mm -hmm. you know, and shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. there's just suck on this. Um, but I said, like, look, you know, fucking likes shouldn't matter. Yeah. I get it. I used to think that likes were dollars, that like literally, you know, it, it provides feedback to, but I feel, I kind of feel like they've manipulated people into, or the, the, I shouldn't say someone necessarily is, you know, back there plotting to do it. But what's happened is, is people are looking for likes. Yeah. And then they're looking for followers and you look at from, 
like, oh, is this person trustworthy? And you look and they've got 120,000 followers. They must be doing something right. Dude, that couldn't be any fucking further from the truth. So in my, and, and I don't know, I guess it's because the nature of what I look at like yeah. in Instagram, but I started getting all these yoga fucking, like I started seeing yoga before I'd ever clicked on one. They sexualize that though. Oh, dude, it's just literally a chicken a yoga pose with her legs, with her legs spread. As far as you can and her, Yeah, and fucking, and a camel toe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 100%. there's, and then you click on it, which I'm, all of this shit, like I'm, you know, for me, I'm like, so which is it? Do you want to show your pussy or do you not? Like, yeah. it's this really fucked up mixed message thing, like, listen, don't sexualize women. <laughs> And then you have all and then of these, like, yeah, and then the pseudo, yeah. yeah, then it's like, oh, yeah, here's me having coffee in some fucking yoga pose where the, the where what you're looking at is her camel toe. Yeah, like, it's like I, in the thirds. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's, okay, so, you know, what the fuck is I going on? I mean, you can kind of equate that to just how life is right now. Like, just, okay, so say, you know, being a man. There's a lot of dudes out there who are scared to be men, yeah. you know, and they're scared to yeah. be like, hey, sometimes I'll, I like to sexualize women, you know, sometimes I like to do this kind of shit, you know, and it's like, right. that's a na- <laughs> well, it's like everybody it's, goes, oh, God. Yeah, yeah it's it, a natural fucking thing, you yeah, know, it and, and it seems like society these days just wants to suppress and suppress like a lot of these natural things because we're all trying to grow and be they more They want to civilized. suppress it, but they still want to show you this shit. And exactly. then it's almost like they want you to suppress well, it, but they it's want, like, hey, man, they uh, want to do it know, in a different do this way. this wrong now. thing. The reality is this, is that they know. They know that it is what sells. Everybody, exactly. anybody who's trying to sell something can say like, oh, sexualization is bad. And then they fucking show you a picture of a dick. Like, you know. Yeah. So, don't look at this. Right. Whatever the you way do, that don't look at it. Don't fucking do it. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So the thing is, is like, it's just this gnarly shit. Like, I, I, accountability is really what I think this boils down to. Like, you know, it's... Well, I would say that it's grown because of this. Like, so early days of Instagram, I think that photographers and tattoo artists and, you know, people that had visual things like, you know, graphic artists, things like that, they thrived very quickly, right? right? But then you get all this other non-talent in the world. And the other thing that thrives very quickly is sexualization of like, you know, women and things like that. So then you get all these different avenues of where, all right, well, I want to post pictures of hot rods but when i just put this camera on here it doesn't get shit but the one with the the bottom tits hanging out what do they call that yeah. like under under boob, under boob. <laughs> yeah. when that's there i get 10 times more likes and then i get more followers like so we've been code. we've been like bred for the last seven eight years now to to chip to, to go towards the things that are most valuable in a like system versus versus art but this is what I'm saying. This is pre- yeah. exactly what I'm saying. So like I stay, you know, the follower account on my account, like stays right about the same. I don't, yeah. you know, I'm not like, oh, 10,000 at a time, man. I'm just ripping yeah. through the people. But that's, that's by choice. Like I really am not, I'm not driven by yeah. trying to please. If I was, I would shoot a fucking girl in a t-shirt with their titties, with their big titties. Like I yeah. just, I'm not driven to do that. You know, I, I would prefer to use the outlet to genuinely discuss things that I care about. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of pigeonholed as it is. Like I post a bike, it gets X number of likes or let's say attention. Yeah. It gets X, it gets X amount of attention. I post a chick, it gets X amount of attention. I post a chick on a bike. It gets, you know, this attention. And when I talk about something that I genuinely care about, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's like, oh, dude, nobody wants your opinion. Just fucking mm-hmm. give us the chick or the bike. I'm like, yeah, it but sucks. this is that's swipe culture. Like that's literally like the fact that they took the time to say that shit is yeah. kind of annoying. Well, no, and fortunately, I just I I know by the numbers that that's the case. Oh yeah, like, yeah. you know, I nobody. You know, you know it was, so when I, you know, I, I started that other page for two reasons and it's doing what I wanted it to, but it's also causing me to, you know, um, to, to just put things out there that gets likes and, and I'm trying to, I'm aware of it. So I'm trying right. not to care. Right. 
but you know when i was starting to practice taking pictures of like my wife because i don't i don't i don't know how to direct right, right? so i was just like at least i have her to practice on basically right. but man like i started getting messages you know what i mean of dudes going dude man your wife's tits man like talk you know like dudes getting weird <laughs> yeah like weird and i'm yeah. like Yo, man, what like, the fuck? I'm yeah. putting them out there. Like, um, it, it, it's not that, not that I'm like a very possessive, insecure guy where, right. like, if you saw my wife's tits, I would be a problem with that. Right. But, bro, don't fucking, like, dead face look me in the eye and be like, yo, man, her tits are nice, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm at that point. It's like, yo, now it's creepy. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what, and, and so that kind of turned me off from shooting her, which sucks because. And me don't, and my, don't me let my, it get to you. Yeah, me and my wife's relationship while we were doing that was amazing because, and this is a bad part on me, but because at this time with me having all these things in my life mm -hmm. that I'm focused on, right? at that moment, like I think that she enjoyed having my attention. undivided attention. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, and I wish I knew how to control that part of my brain a little bit better, but you know. It's just one of those things, man. Like I, I, I well, it is what it is, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, the thing is, is that you, if you had that response, that's real shit. Like, yeah. I, you know, I, the thing is, this is it. Like, I don't. Uh, when when someone makes a comment, mm -hmm. like this is this was fucked. Like, I genuinely like. So I post this photo, and. Some dude says, like, what's that smell like? And I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. Wow. Yeah, like, like wow. you know, the thing is, is that you're, for me, I feel like I'm doing something that, like, I, I get it. Yeah. I, I get that you think that. But how about you just leave it as a fucking thought? Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't understand the mechanism that makes a guy, like... I understand the impulse to think that. I don't understand the, the impulse and then the action to fucking let everybody else know that you thought that. Like, yeah. Because because I really do like it's a it is a fine line. You present this and everybody just thinks that it's like you know, just an all out free for all. Yeah. And it's not, man. I mean, like this is this is a human being. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's not. Like, I don't know. So it's a, it is a, it is a very strange thing. Well, I just delete those comments. I would say that it, it, in the same way that we've, like I said in my comment about like now everybody's catering to the thing that gets the most attention, like with their own like photography or art or whatever, right. like they're all going that direction. Well, there's also the fact that everybody that's viewing it has now been conditioned to like this better. You know what right. I mean? Like could, like you, you occasionally would like, find a picture of like like a, a common one i look at every time i scroll on your page is the jamie lee curtis one from back in the day right I'm like god damn she was pretty as hell yes you know what i mean absolutely beautiful like naturally yeah. beautiful yeah. yeah and you're like i look at that now and i'm more floored and stopping i want to stare at that now more than like the other chicks that that like you know around fucking there. phony yeah well see this is this this was a big change for me like uh uh, an indicator for me in that, like, I don't want makeup. Like, I don't, w I don't want like. And if you have makeup on, I want it to look like you have no makeup on. Yeah, you know. So there are people like <clears throat> that I've shot that I'll, you know, I know that like they're not comfortable without makeup. Mm -hmm. And I'll say like, hey, you know, we shoot. And then at the end of that shoot, I'll be like, hey, or maybe it's a couple of times. Whatever it is, so, so, it's, so it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, hey, can we do some shit? Like, you just take, like, every fucking bit of makeup off. Let me just do a couple like that. Yeah. And I know those are the ones that I'm going to, that I'm going to work. Yeah, yeah. But I think what's happened is, is that, like, you know, and it's, it's not really in my place to say it, you, it would be better served if, people asked or the girls that I shot that I've shot without makeup. But my res their response to me has been like, man, I, you know, I was, I would have never left the house without makeup. And what happens is, is people respond to these, you know, you look at 
women responding to these photos, mm -hmm. they'll post them and they're like, you are beautiful. But the thing is, is what there's, what is, a, what is being allowed to happen is, is that they're actually absorbing the compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause there's, there's no, they're not fucking hiding. Like they're yeah, not, there's no filter between it. You know, <clears throat> no, their there's no, like they don't, it's like when someone says you're beautiful and you're partially nude and you have no makeup on, it really is about you. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, I it, think also the women don't see themselves that way. No, very much. No, like, women, dude, women are fucking so fucking hard on them. I, I can't tell you like how many like agency girls who have, like we're looking through images and they're like, Oh, not that one. Like, I mean, this is someone who's, you know, five ten, five eleven, and weighs 110 pounds. Mm -hmm. So there's not much to them. You mm -hmm. know, there isn't, they're like, Oh, look, like there's rolls, like I'm hunched over. Like that looks funky. I'm like, man. Yeah. You know? So I guess my point, my real point is, is that, you know, Every woman has fucking issues with a, a self self image, like yeah, the way yeah. that they view themselves, body dysmorphia, all that shit. Like they all have those issues. Like people just seem to think that in particular women, like, oh, that person, like if I looked like that, like my life would be fucking, well, guess what? Like Thing. That person that you're talking about feels exactly the same way you do about her body. So what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's like something that just us as a society puts on them too, though. Yeah. You know what of I'm course. saying? So that's, that's our fault. <laughs> well, it's America's the thing fault. Is, it's almost I, like we I, liked a little bit of like when they started, you know, it's like you like a little <laughs> bit of this, like, I feel like in the nineties, right? I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to frame this. Real 80s quick. and 90s was much more natural, and then and then once we got towards like, it's like the 90s 2000s, was like when the when like breast implants really started. Yeah, to like so really coming into like mainstream. breast implants were fucking huge in the 80s. They were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. and then like early 2000s, like this whole like glam thing started happening, you know. And then now we're we're at where we're at now. It's just like full blown like glitter fucking makeup and you know they have a piece of makeup on every part of their face and you know what i'm saying it's like it just is it, it naturally that's people hiding it naturally grows that's that way hide. i think that that's people hiding mm -hmm. I, I i genuinely think that that shit is is you know it's a mask yeah but i mean also it's like it's growth you know like we all continue to do the same thing but try to make more of it just like with technology right you know? it's, like it's we're, simple we're when we started and then it gets more and more complicated makeup simple when we started more and more complicated music simple complicated you know what i'm saying like it, it it's a constant growth and I, I think that we've gotten to a point now where we're all starting to realize like hey we're getting too complicated with everything like you know everybody's starting to go back to listening to vinyl right. and you know chicks are like using all this crazy shit and then they're starting to kind of i think there's gonna be a time when they start like tapering back towards well, i think we're seeing i think yeah. we're seeing that i yeah. think that the whole like pseudo hippie thing like I, I think that you know or i shouldn't say hippie more just natural you yeah know, more laid back t-shirts mm -hmm. jeans like yeah i think about more being like, like a 70s kind of like, yeah right like right. a you know just yeah, where it's like a good blend between, you know, a good band shirt and, you know, a little part of hair. Fucking Levi's. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I, for me, that shit is like, I just, uh, I, I like it's kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And I, and I believe that about fucking everything. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that is, that is an approach that applies to literally everything. That doesn't mean that you don't obsess about the little details or, you know, how your, you know, tone, like to the guitar stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, tubes, like fucking speakers and fucking all sorts of shit. Like I'm fucking with a lot of stuff right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. but so it's not that it's, it's not that it's not, uh, it's not that it's simple. Mm -hmm. but you try to remove like all of the like less working parts. Right. So in my head, I've always seen it as like simplicity is the mark of a professional, you know? Yeah. Because it's like simple is hard. True. That's a good point. Yeah. It's really fucking well, hard. Well, it takes, you know what it takes is it takes like, uh, it takes like confidence takes in yourself, discipline, yeah. discipline yeah. to be like, okay, I don't need all this extra right. shit to sound this good or you do know, this good. That's a great, 
uh, thing you said, Jesse, because in, in paint, you know, when I was learning how to paint, it, put like this, you, we all know mini trucks, right? Right. Wild, wild paint jobs. Yeah. It's been known for that. But it's wild and it looks good to a certain eye. But then as you get older, this more simplistically and clean paint jobs would be the ones that made the most money and became the most sought after over time, if that right. makes sense. And yeah. so it, it gets it gets really hard to make something evoke emotion in mm -hmm. such a simplistic manner. Or at least it is whenever you're young and like I, I know how to do the cheese whiz or the or the or the, the the Swiss cheese graphic and then right. the, the razor stripes and all this crazy shit. Like it looks busy and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm glad I did that. Mm -hmm. But then you start getting to the point where you just have this nice clean line and the colors are just beautiful. So you see, that's a refinement of that. What you're doing is, is that, that is where the real fucking magic is yeah. <clears throat> because what you're doing is, is you are refining, I, I re refining apparent phenomena. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking to do is to have all of that emotion in the way that line cuts yeah. across that black. Right. And you're also like, especially when you first start out with something and you start learning all these new things and you're very obsessed with it, you want to do everything you know on one paint, paint job or one song or whatever. Yeah. You want to put it all in there because you want you just kind of want to prove to your... show your skills. Yeah, you want to yeah. prove to you and yeah. everybody else that you know how to do that. And it isn't until you get to a point where you become like confident in your abilities and in your... your uh, Abilities to just be a musician or be a painter, you're like, okay, I don't need all this shit. What serves this and like what will make this, you know, yeah, be what it needs to be? That's a, I'm, I'm kind of going through that phase with my helmets right now because what got them yeah. kind of known was, uh, was you know, all the the fish scales and the leaf right. and the right and the and the lace the intricacy. And now I'm wanting to dial that back to more simplistic like that up there where it. Might have a couple of those elements, but it's it's just like I, I want it more clean and simple. Like I don't want every when you paint a, a a helmet, right? There's only so many elements that go into that paint job as far as like your silver leaf, your this, your this, your this, and so the repetitiveness gets shown very quickly. Right. You know what I mean? And there's the, also I'm dealing with customers and what they want. So some of them go like, "Look, I don't care what you do, but I gotta have lace. I love it." Right. Like, all right. Cool, man. Like I got you. Or some of them are like, I don't care what you do. I do not want any fucking lace on this helmet. I hate that <laughs> shit. And right. So it's usually like those right. kind of directions you get with uh, with paint jobs. But then like there's also the direction that I want to go as an artist, right? And I'm trying to navigate through this shit and hit those those buttons that they wanted and avoid the ones they didn't, but also make myself proud of what I just did. Of course. You know what I mean? Right. And so uh, I'm falling into more of like simplistic is like more attractive to me right now. You know what I mean? And, but see, I think what this uh, back to that point, I think what's happening inside you is, is you realize that you're refining the apparent phenomena. You're, you are refining the thought process. It isn't part of it is visual. Yeah. But the other thing is, is if I, if someone says to you like, cool running stream mm -hmm. and and it has the effect like you watch the person go fuck yeah you know that's that's what we want i mean we ultimately we want to talk less we want to say less we want to i don't want to say we want to do less but I, <clears throat> because it takes more I don't know. It takes more of of whatever it means to be human to do less. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And then doing, but, you know, any kind of art or photography or anything and, and just putting less into it and getting more. It, it kind of makes it more, it leaves more like ambiguity to it. Yeah. So there's more like open for interpretation. So more people can see it in different ways and it resonates with them yeah. more. I think it becomes more timeless too. And that's one of the weird things. That's a huge thing. And that's the thing with yeah. music too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So with, with the paint job, like, you know, like, like I said, we were kind of starting this conversation earlier, like these helmets, I want them to be something that, that means as much to you and, and your life as your life does. Right. And, you know what I mean? If, yes. That might be a, a heavy one, but no, it's not, you know, cause it is, it's, a, it is an, it is an extension yeah. of, 
But when you're, you know, I'm a, I'm a very firm believer in like fucking people have style. Like yeah. that should be something that you, that you, you know, when you look at people who, people who, uh, influence you. Yeah. They have style. I mean, they have some type of style, but that's so all of this is this, you know, comfort, like becoming comfortable with who you are and how you carry yourself, and, you know, what you wear. So those are like your, this is the thing is, is like you're trying to get into and creating. Well, what you just elements. said right there is, is kind of one of those things. Like we are all influenced by people, right? And sometimes right. we see this guy's like, man, that dude just, he's got it figured out. It's like you were talking about with the women, right? Right. Guys deal with it too. Like we want to feel that natural. Like I want to feel like I just wake up and grab whatever's on the dresser and and I don't change my shirt three times. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, <laughs> I yeah. want to be that guy, but I yeah. am not. You know, I'm like yeah. ah, I'm feeling kind of bloated in this shirt today. I'm yeah. not going to wear it. So, um, yeah, those kind of things, man. Like it, it it plagues us all. But I, I the older I get, the less I'm starting to care. And it's also one of those things like. Not that I don't care about my appearance. That's actually real style. Real style, I think, yeah. happens when you, when you understand all of the, you understand all the processes, yeah. and you go, only this matters today. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, so, <laughs> like, uh, you know, one of my good buddies, Justin, my machine, is he, uh, like, last year at a camp out, he wore some all red Vans, and I just kept seeing them. And I'm yeah. like fucking digging that man yeah so I, I wore a set of all red vans on my la on our trip to california right. last year and it's and like you know what i knew i saw i was like oh the red van's the killer yeah and so <laughs> i've always been one of those guys or i've recently i don't know when it started or whatever but like instead of you know like hey man I, those are nice shoes I, I dig what you did there i'm like oh yeah my buddy justin wore it, man i fucking i had to man it should look so badass this, on him this is and all, then instead of like oh man you know that's just how i woke up today <laughs> well the <laughs> you know thing I mean? is is it like this is how you know you, this is real confidence it, it confidence is what is appealing mm -hmm. to people you know, that's if, you know, you can say like, oh man, <clears throat> when you talk about size or boob size or hair or whatever your preference is, mm -hmm. like someone who has like really, really serious confidence, you're like, man, that's, that, that's fine as fuck. Mm -hmm. It's not my normal style, but like there's something about that person that really does it for me. And what? I, I, this is a weird, I know what you're saying, though. I know what you're saying. This is a weird way to go about this. But so, like, in 2009, I got really into fishing. Uh-huh. And, and I saw, I, this sounds silly, but, like, I started reading about bass fishing. And I started watching videos and shit. And these guys were consistently talking about confidence. And I was like, what in the fuck? I mean, I hear this. I hear this message in everything I do. Mm -hmm. But when it came to fishing, I was like, yeah, "I'm still. I'm right here. I'm, the I'm waiting fuck on this are one." You saying, yeah. man, confidence has. So, you know, I fucking I'm fishing. Like I'm just, uh, you know, I'm out fishing, 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 fishing. And, you know, one of the things they talk about is, is there are patterns develop every day on a body of water, small or big, it doesn't matter, boat or no boat, there are patterns. Like you'll, you jerk three times, reel, 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 jerk once, like you, you're doing something, you get a hit, that, so you, consciously the idea is you start making note of what the pattern yeah. is for that day. <clears throat> There's light conditions, you know, there's a, there's a multitude of things. Your awareness becomes what you're using to pull in this information to figure out what the day's patterns are. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking out of this place and I looked over and it was, it was cattails and there was a shadow right next to the bank. I mean, the water was cloudy. I couldn't see, but I was like. There's a big fucking fish there. Set my tackle bag down. One cast landed right in the center of that fucking shadow. Wham! He fucking hit it. 
and it was a monster fucking fish. And I was like, see, the thing is, is I knew he was there because of all of these patterns. That gate, that when you the have those experience, yeah. when you have those experiences, you develop confidence. So this is this is the twofold deal with that. I took a like this spot was fucking fire, man. Like I pulled gigantic fucking fish out of this trophy fish. Mm -hmm. You know, seven eight. I would go out and catch fucking three seven pound fish. Mm. You know, guys who spend crazy money with boats and shit. You know, they're happy to catch two, three, four. They're just happy to catch fish. But when you can consistently pull seven and eight pound fish out of, you know, a trip, mm -hmm. and I, you know, anyways, I won't go into where it was, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a, I had a friend say, fuck, cause I used to post a lot of those pictures of these yeah. fish. I had a friend say, you got to take me to this spot. I took one person and it was this guy. And I said, look, this is what I'm using. I was using these vibrator jigs. I said, this is what I'm using. Use this. You know, and I caught, I caught a fish and I was like, okay, so what you want to do is kind of run it along the bottom and just kind of jerk and mm. reel, jerk and reel. Cause, cause what it'll do is, isn't it just, it, yeah, it looks like a, yeah. I mean, they, they, <clears throat> they act, uh, like it's not a replicable, like it, uh, it doesn't replicate easily. Like it, so mm. it just kind of shoots around and shit. Um, I caught 14 fish that day and he caught none. <laughs> this place, this place that we were fishing was maybe 10 times the size of this room. It wasn't a big place. I was catching all of the fucking fish and he was catching none. He was using the exact same fucking lure. I gave him one of mine. I said, use this. He ultimately ended up going and trying other things because he wasn't catching fish. Why is that? I knew I was going to catch fish. Mm -hmm. He didn't. Yeah. Confidence made a fucking difference like right. there's just there's so knowing this going into situations where you you <clears throat> you have confidence like it just it makes the difference that applies it, to so much in life too though like i do like jujitsu and shit right if in like when we when we go to roll and we're like sparring matches and shit if i don't go into that thinking like all right i'm gonna take this dude down right then i'm gonna get my ass kicked you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you have to be confident. You have to be self-assured enough to know that, you know, you're willing. Because when you're confident, you're, you're more willing to take these risks. You're more willing to do the things that other people aren't who aren't confident. Right. You know, so it is very imperative to have that in every aspect of life. You know, whether it's music, art, clothing, fishing, whatever the fuck you're doing. If, if you just walk around unassured of yourself, lost, aimless, whatever, totally. you're, you're not. Yeah. You're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to find the things you're looking or you're not even looking. Well, well, they're just not going to present themselves. Yeah. I, I think that this is the thing. They're is, not is I don't put themselves in the position to <clears throat> find the, uh, the well, opportunities. Right. So yeah. I think there's a, there's a lot to that statement, though. And I think that you know, your story about the fish, it goes to this, it's experience, right? Right. A lot of people, or I don't want to generalize and say a lot of people, but just sometimes we don't put enough time into things to ever actually gain anything out of it. Right. Right. So well, we don't put the time in and we don't pay attention when we do. Hmm. Quality of attention span is fucking everything. Like if I say, Tim, you know what, to be a professional, anything, you need to put 10,000 hours into it. Right. If you're just putting 10,000 mindless hours into it. You might not, you'll be better right. at 10,000, but you won't be where you would be if you focused for 10,000 hours. Right. right. So same thing, like I used to complain a lot because going and sketching and trying to come up with a paint job idea was always the bottleneck. It, it still is to this day, but it's usually the bottleneck for flow in my paint jobs, in, right. my, in, in the production here. Every time you sit down, it's like, you know, it, when I do sit down recently, I've been like, all right, I, I know I can, I've, I've done this a million times. Right. I know that something will come. I don't know where it's at in there. It's bouncing around, but hopefully it'll drain out and it'll be on this paper. Um, and I've just gotten to the point now where like, it almost does. Every time I sit down, I, you know, I usually have 10 things to draw and I'll, right now I'm feeling blue right now. All right, I'll do this blue helmet. It might not be for five more helmets, but I'm in a blue fucking fi vibe right now, you know? Right. And now it's like I come out with shit and I don't feel depressed afterwards. Like, fuck, I just wasted three hours. I'm not stoked about anything. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and then the next day I walk into it after that failure, I'm like less confident. Well, see, and the I'm thing like, is, is it's not there. Uh, it's not a failure. Like if yeah. you're what, what you, first of all, too, I believe that when we, when we channel shit, like when we, we're all just channels, like, so if I'm fighting with the process, I'm, I'm going to channel less. Yeah. If, when you go, look, man, I'm just going to start putting down fucking, and this is, this is like genuine courage. Yeah. This goes to what you're talking about. Like, you're like, I, I don't know what, I, I'm going to fucking beat this person because I'm going to beat them. And I don't know how I'm creatively going to do that because you don't know what they're going to do. It isn't right. like, you know, people study films and, you know, when they're going to, you know, uh, battle somebody or how, however the fuck you're going to play this football team, like you study the films. That doesn't mean they're going to do that shit to you. Yeah. You know, and so the thing is, is that you go, okay, what can I do? But, but you have to show up. And when you fucking show up and you channel it, you, let, you get creative. You, you know, you... I don't know. Like, that's I, I feel like the thing is, like, you, with anything, you have to put the reps in, right? So taking what you're saying is, like, you have to channel these ideas or these, you know, creative things you're trying to do. Um, the first time you fucking sit down to channel this shit, and it's say it's been, a, you know, a couple weeks, couple months, whatever, that, that channel is going to have blockage. It's going to have shit that needs to be scraped out. So you start by putting the reps in. You do it once, it sucks, you feel bad about it, but you keep doing it. And then the more you do it, the easier it becomes because now that channel has been strengthened with the amount of times that you've done it. Mm -hmm. So like when I sit down to make music, you know, if I haven't done it in a couple of weeks, I'm like, fuck, this is, I don't know what the fuck to do, but you know, I'm having a hard time banging out one song as opposed to if I do this every single night, whether, you know, I have an idea or not, I just sit down and get myself to do it. It starts unblocking those channels. And by putting those reps in, I'm able to like, now I sit down and it just, it comes to you easier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, the one of the things I think that like we, I think a major blockage in these creative aspects is ego. Mm -hmm. like when you remove yourself, like, this is the thing is, is like, you think, what am I going to do? Yeah. Well, you aren't going to do, the first thing you got to do is get the fuck out of the way. And, mm -hmm. and if you make a space for it to fucking happen, it'll be, you're doing it, but it's, this is, I, I believe that the, the importance of creativity is that you disappear while mm -hmm. you're creating. Mm -hmm. You become one with a creator. Like, it doesn't matter what belief system or how spiritual you are. Genuine creativity removes this fortified sense of self from mm -hmm. the equation. Now, what shows up and says like, hey man, that's my work, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Then, then this fucking fortified sense of self comes back. Yeah. Can. Right. But you just stay the fuck, if you stay the fuck out, I think when you talk to people from a music standpoint, when you talk to great fucking musicians, they're like, I don't know, man, like I just, I, you know, something sets the stage, especially like improvisational stuff. Like it's, which is the beauty to me is the most yeah. beautiful music. Cause it's, it's just, it's something that's happening. It's what I love about jazz and it, that it, that it's just happening that someone goes and you go so it's this it's really this dialogue with the infinite and that i think the more that we create dialogue with the infinite the more we're really yeah ventilating yeah and that that really rings true to me because i've sat down many a times where and you know started writing a piece of music or doing something with music and i'm like you know what man that just that doesn't sound like me you know, that's that we don't sound like this. That's not our sound. And you kind of get in your own way by doing that kind of shit and having that me, 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 like, yes. what am I? Is as, as opposed to just being like, this is music and I'm just going to be a conduit to, you know, whatever comes out. Right. Well, I think after time and experience, it goes back to like what you were saying about uh, Eddie when he picked up that guitar. Mm -hmm. it, it's like your sound 
you know what I mean, is something you earn over time. Yeah, it isn't. It's, you know, the thing is, it's, is, nat- it is, it's already there. It's a natural thing, but you get in the way with your own thoughts of who you think you are and what you think you are and yeah. shit like that. You know. So. Yeah. I, on on the subject of Eddie, I saw the same thing. I saw this. I'm, I'm watching this clip, and he's like, <clears throat> and I've had. I'm sure you've had. We've all had in various circumstances, but in with music, like sometimes when I feel my tone, I'm like, this mm. is this shit is makes this you want to play way well, different. But the thing is, is it, it it isn't what it does is is you go you hear it and you're like, oh motherfucker, yeah. and you play shit that you're like, ooh yeah. man, I just fucking like that something shit, about shit was that crispy. Yes, yeah, I mean you really really fucking feel it. So the thing is, is that then you go. Like inside of you is this giant fucking Cheshire grin. You're like, oh man, like I, I know that it's in there now. It's like when you start planting, you put seeds down, you water it, yeah, whatever. And when that shit comes up, you're like, oh man, I can do it. Like this is, this shit's actually happening. Your first dollar, whatever the fuck it is. Like you realize that like the universe is, is reacting to, mm-hmm what you're what you're like releasing like what yeah. you're doing some people all of this confidence and all of this shit all of this boils into which to turn this like i i really feel like we're we're this country is so fucking at odds right now mm. with it with it's just really fucking divided but if you step back and say like you know the whole pandemic shit yeah it's been an inconvenience but I've talked to a lot of a lot of people who have done a lot of good shit mm-hmm. during this pandemic. It's where you put your energy at. Like I well, was saying course. before, it's like, right. uh, you know, for I wouldn't say fortunate. You going down there? Yeah, I got to the restaurant. You can grab me those tuckies out of the. You want a tucky? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Water is for you, by the way. All right. I'll um, this so what? What I've um, yeah. So basically, the pandemic happens, and and I'm fortunate that like nothing slowed down for me. Like it didn't right. affect me business-wise, whatever, you know what I mean? So the thing that I still wanted to take out of this and to try to show people, like, look, you can spend all your energy being on Facebook and and getting a part of these polarizing arguments about, like, this side versus this side and mask or no mask or all these things, right? Right. Or you can just let that play out the way, however it's going to play out, because you really don't have a say. Right. Like, what you're doing is not going to change it. Right. Your argument on Facebook under your cousin that's way on the other side of the table than you are isn't going to change her. But if you just like, you know what I've been wanting to try? I've been wanting to try pottery right. or fucking gardening or whatever or woodworking. Just to just get into it and put your mind in that and then like see what happens, man, if you put time into things. I think beyond that though, I think that if we realize if we realize that we're all the same mm. the, that we're you know, somebody, whoever the collective they is, yeah. somebody wants us to concentrate on how we're not alike. Yeah, and we are division. all like, we are all a lot alike. Like we all want the same thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we, we're all human beings. We all have the exact same needs. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, from a physical standpoint, we all have the same needs. From an emotional standpoint, we all have very similar needs. So, you know, I've really tried to like, to concentrate on that. And it does, it gets frustrating, but it doesn't really Thanks, like, sir. cold snack. <laughs> oh, those things are the fucking best, man. <laughs> you ever had one of those? No. But I, no, I stopped, they're alcohol, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I stopped drinking like. Long time ago. Not too long. I mean, like three years ago. But. That's a long time, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's some people who have like, but I do, I'll do that. Like I'll go, I've gone nine years without, I mean, I'll drink, drink, drink. And then nine years I don't drink. Uh, and I'm then. at the heaviest I've ever been in my life right now. Well, with drinking? Uh, no, uh, just weight wise. Oh, okay. And um, it's always weird because like I, I've constantly, like every year it's kind of like, you make a little bit more money, you gain a few more pounds. Right? <laughs> well, and the older you get, dude, sadly, yeah. the older we get, like the weight doesn't come off. Like It, it just doesn't come anyway. Sorry. It doesn't come off like it used it to. It doesn't. Be. Yeah. So it's like, I look at it like, you know what? I, I've, I've learned how to drop 20, not fast, but I know how to drop 20. Right. right? I don't know how to drop 30. Right. And now it's getting to a point where like, 
when I used to drop 20, I was at a place where I really like to be. And then I could taper back into, you know, my weight again, because you go on this hard regiment for a while, get down right now. I'm almost 250. So I'd get down to like, before I'd be like 230. I get like 215. I'm like, yeah, this is where I want to be. I like right. this. I'm not crackhead skinny. Right. But I'm also like, I, I feel good in an XL shirt. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and then, like, now I'm at 250, so losing 20 puts me where I used to feel fat. You know what I mean? To I where know I would, exactly what well, you mean. Yeah. Yet again, that's like the reps, man. Once you get to 220, you just do what you did to lose the 20 pounds. Continue doing it. And it doesn't have to be a hardcore diet. It's really just more about putting time into working out and exercising. That's the one thing that when you get older, you have the least amount of is time. Yeah, but if when, you really wanted it, you would make time for it. I, well, I do agree for that, but but like I said, the the... The thing is, like, it, my excuse, my excuse is right. Right. Um, <laughs> every, admitted it. No. Yeah. It, yeah I mean, it's no, all I it mean, is. I yeah, could yeah. I could cut certain things out mm -hmm. and and use that time for that, but it doesn't. You know, there's so many things in motion in my life. There's a lot of plates getting spun on my arms. Yeah. Right now. And that and that is the thing. You know, like. When it comes to exercise, if you don't make it into a habit or yeah. like if like really with anything, like if you allow yourself to slack one day, then that one day becomes two and then three and then a week and then a month, <clears throat> you know. So for me, it's like between balancing, like working a full time job, you know, doing podcasts with you, having a fucking a girlfriend, going to jujitsu, having band practice. It's like I'm literally on all day until like I get home at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, but you're also you know, 25, so like I know. <laughs> this is a, but this is a thing, though. This is to me. This is how you boil. This is how this is all boiled down. Is is that if it's not a part of like if it's not something sustainable? Yeah. You know, the older I got, like I started thinking, like, <clears throat> you know, sure I can go through this for a phase, mm -hmm. but can I sustain this? Yeah. And that's the thing is, is like if you're making changes, like you have to. You have to put them in a, in a way to where it's not too harsh so it, it can be sustainable. And, uh, you know, but at that point, it's like, what is your definition of sustainable? Well, you know, as, sustainable as, for me, sustainable is doing it every day almost on autopilot. And that's yeah. the thing is, is it like, so I'm not, I'm not super physically fit. Like I don't work out like, you know, I, I don't know. Like I just... I try to, I mean, you know, I've, this is all like, like maybe a year ago. No, it was longer than that. Maybe a year and year and a half, year and a couple of months. I don't know how long. It was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. though. I went plant-based. Mm -hmm. This is like, so the fucking older you get, you like shit that you do makes you feel like shit. Like, yeah. I got tired of feeling like shit. Right. That's why I stopped drinking. Well, plus two, like, I, f I mean, I felt like I wasn't fucking long for this. And world. see, like, I think you have to go into it with a different mindset, too. Like, with me this time around with, like, working out and exercising and shit, I'm not doing it to lose weight or to train my body in any particular way, shape, or form. I'm doing this to shape my mind. As in, I try, I'm teaching myself discipline. You know, I'm teaching myself that you can't, say today I don't feel like doing this because I have a, a tummy ache or I yeah. have a headache or I got three hours of sleep. No, motherfucker. You're going to wake up and you're going to do what you are expected to do. And you have to. And you have to hold yourself accountable. And the only way you can teach yourself that is through putting yourself in uncomfortable positions and growing from it. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't just allow you can't be like, you know what, today I just want to self care and I think I'm going to sit down and do yeah, nothing. I mean, this I've always preached discipline, but yeah. discipline comes like to certain people, they have that ability to, to apply discipline without consequences on the end. Right. And so for me, my discipline's always come from consequences. Right. If I don't do this, then a, if if A doesn't get done, B doesn't exist. I don't work. Rent ain't getting paid. I'm on the street. It's, <laughs> it's A right. plus B right. equals C kind of things. Right. Um, and so w when it comes to like, I've built this whole thing right here, right? Right. You know, that is having a good time on a podcast and then all these other people in America, these other guests that, that want to come on and be a part of this show, man, I want to have a beer with Jace. That looks like a good time. Yeah. Right. Right. 
Now I'm I'm fucking people's good time. I'm I'm the beer for them. I'm I'm a fucking twelve pack for them. You're a, you're the Burt Kreischer. Yeah. So <laughs> the, and, and you kind of want to be that. You want to you want people to enjoy that 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 presence. And um, I'm not saying that it can't be had without alcohol. But you know the last podcast we did with our buddy Craig in here, oh, we dude, were we all got fucked trashed up. Trashed by two o'clock, man. And we were just in here cutting up, and you know that looks fun. People want to be a part of that yeah. experience. And, yeah. And it's hard to just say, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to cut out drinking altogether because, you know. Yeah, and I think that's a little too drastic, man. I, I think yeah. you should just. I'm it, trying to manage it. Exactly. I, I am. I'm trying to get to a point where instead of, and we talked about this on the last podcast, and this is something you talked about on Dan's podcast. I'm trying to stop whenever it's time to stop. Right. You right. know what I mean? Instead yeah, of well, like. The thing is, is for people who have. You know, if it becomes a problem, it's a fucking problem. Yeah. And that's not for anybody else to decide but you. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is so if, if it isn't, <clears throat> you know, it, for me, the problem was feeling like shit. Like I just. Uh, yeah, I don't like that either, man. I, I didn't. I the, didn't. I, I felt sick. Like I felt like. But ultimately what it was is, is I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And it's worth noting that usually, you know, like when we, I've, have I, have I been drunk around you? The first time I met you was, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you were. Okay. So, <laughs> so it was when, uh, uh, Joey Cano and Dan were doing the podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, in your garage yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And you were, you were taking shots. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that's the thing is, is so now, you know, you have this, when you, when you stop drinking, people are like, this and and the point in talking about going plant based, like you paint yourself into a fucking like people are like, oh man, like you yeah, don't what drink is this and you don't eat doing? fucking meat, man. Yeah, like, yeah. how am I ever gonna fucking relate to you? And it is, it's difficult. But I, I don't give a fuck. Like uh, for me, I, I realized that like I drank to do questionable shit. Yeah, right. I really fucking <laughs> did. Like, I, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with doing questionable shit. Mm -hmm. I don't need to fucking drink to do that. And I don't, I guess for me, and I don't, there is, there is absolutely fucking zero. Uh, I don't care about anybody drinking. Right. I don't yeah. care about you. Yeah, fucking, you're, not, you're not on a you high You railed horse. them up right now and started blasting through the fucking eight ball. I don't fucking care. I don't, I don't, I have very little like, you know, it's only, you know. Yeah, it does. It, for, for this perspective, though, it does feel bad. Like if, if we would have came up here and like as soon as you sat down, I, I put a water over there and then I put a t six pack over here. Like, yeah. I would have been, yes, I would be stoked. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, listen, that's the thing is, is maybe, I, maybe it's kind of like, the fact that you're holding yourself to a different standard that makes other people who aren't it doing makes that people uncomfortable. Fucking man, dude, it, it makes people and I know I know the dynamics. They're like It's like you hold up a mirror to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, wait a minute. Exactly. Fuck. That's what it is. You're holding the mirror to these people and they're yeah. like, around this guy, I don't feel like I'm doing enough for myself or all whatever. I, all I ever You think you're better than me? It's like a mirror. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> And it couldn't be any further from the truth. I, right. I, I have some really good friends that like just don't come well, around anymore. I would say I don't drink, but yeah. I'm not any different. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually you nicer. Know, you know, ethics are Mike, don't you? Or go and leave Mike now? I think so. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, he ended up having, uh, I think, diabetes. Is, I think it's, yeah. He, he, he found out he was diabetic. So he so, pretty much cut drinking out completely. So he but he was drinking, already kind of doing that. But, you know, it's like I know he likes to drink, and that's something that he's done. And I've spent some of my best memories of in being a biker have been with this dude at campsites. Right. Around campfires, right. drinking beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now that part is gone, and, not like, I don't – I know that he enjoyed that shit as well. So it's like I don't want to go hang out with him and, like, get shit-faced in front of him, and he can't do it and be that temptation. See, don't do that. Yeah. I I'll tell you – don't do that. Like this person is people make their choices. Like I don't, I wouldn't like I, I have alcohol. Yeah. I make people drinks. Like I don't have any issues with alcohol. I don't have any issues. I'm not looking at like, Oh man, 
I'm not. Some people that smell it. some yeah. people that shit. That hey, put it like? on my yeah. finger, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some people are like you know. Some people can't be around shit, and yeah. they. But but I just fucking stopped drinking. Yeah, you I made have, the decision in your mind that you're done, and you're done. You know, there's no more. I'm done for. I always say I'm done for now. Like and I don't and that's because the tomorrow key. I don't want it to be like. Oh, hey, I'm fucking dead. See, you know, and that, like, and that, that fucking loser, man, I think he just that, was on there talking about how he fucking doesn't drink. I think that's the fucking mentality, though. That's how come it works. Because at, you have to trick your brain. If you tell yourself, hey, man, today I'm doing keto, or hey, man, today I'm not drinking, you're going to want to fucking drink. You're going to think about it all day. It's just like quitting smoking. You're like, oh, I can't have a cigarette. I can't have... So you're thinking about wanting a cigarette, yeah, right? Yeah, you just fucking don't think about it. But when you tell it. yourself... Man, I think I'm just done for now. I don't I don't want one. I might have one later, you know, a couple years yeah, or whatever. Right. And then in that way, it's just out of your mind. You know, now you're freed up to think about other shit and get away from whatever your vice was or whatever your problem was. Well, the thing a huge thing in our like culture is is that we always want to fucking like oh like that, like vice, like oh they stopped drinking and now they're a sex addict. Now they're a this <laughs> addict. I'm all man, what the fuck like People can't fucking enjoy sex. Like yeah. you're a fucking sex addict if you yeah. fucking rub one out mm -hmm. five times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nineteen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, 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 that's not necessarily like true life story, but it does. It changes. Like, the <laughs> older you get. For, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a friend told me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know the thing is, is I, I don't know, man. Like. I, I think that we fucking worry about shit like way too fucking much. Like yeah, we just, for sure. We just overanalyze every fucking thing to like the nth degree. And all that does, I think that like I've noticed like CBDs and eating plant based, like that shit has given me fucking more energy. It's cleared up like, uh, you know, kind of a fog. Like yeah. I feel fucking, I feel better, like just a lot better. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, man. Um, also I do, I take CBD every night too. Yeah. And that should help my like joints real fuck, a lot. Dude. There's like, I, fuck. That was so very helpful. few people have ever, I was Max when I we were talking about this during the Southern Throwdown, and Max was like, "Dude, CBD changed skating. Mm -hmm. Like skating for me at my age with with CBD has been like, yeah, you know, it's insane how much it changed. Like even <clears throat> I, dude, I, and I just started this too, probably like a month ago. But for three months before that, like I fucked my knee up real bad uh, wrestling, and uh, like I couldn't even sit like Indian style anymore because it just hurt so bad. Yeah, I started right. taking CBD and stretching, gone in like a fucking week. You know, it just all of my muscle problems and joints and shit started hurting. I also want to talk to you about like, so what? What is your diet now? Like, you you're doing this plant based stuff. So like, what are you, what are you eating on a regular basis? Uh, so in the morning I have like uh, oatmeal, but it's like oatmeal and turmeric. Uh, it's got some kale in it, some mushrooms. Lunch, I you know I <clears throat> everything there are. Uh, I've believed this for a long time. Like ancient cultures, it wasn't like we had buffalo mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we only had them when they were there and we actually killed one. Right. So, so what we ate, if, you know, 75, 80%, 90% of what we ate was. Like vegetables. Yeah, and, it was vegetables. And shit that we, and shit fruits like that. and, you know, yeah. legumes, things that we found. I genuinely believe that is a that is our diet. We don't have canines. Mm -hmm. Some, I mean, we kind of have residual canines, but we don't have canines. Right. I mean, our teeth. We're in a. We're not meant. <clears throat> you know, we're we're omnivores, right? right? Yeah, omnivores. Yeah, we are. But when you think about like, we don't eat predators. <sighs> right. Like we eat cows. Yeah, we like, run from predators. Right. <laughs> well, because <laughs> this is the thing is is like not eating. Predators. I don't know. Like I, all of this, there is a. Uh, so you you just like completely have you a hundred percent cut out meat? I I haven't, man. I haven't just cut out meat. I but don't do eat, you eat any animal product. I don't eat butter. I don't eat cheese. I right. Don't eat, like, so you got rid of a lot of a lot of the things that are commonly processed as well. Right. So you know maybe there's like compounding factors to why you feel better on there's that no diet. There's no question. You know, all um, of this, I, I think that like, 
So, you know, you talk with people and they're like, oh, you know, we've got our garden and stuff. I was like, before long, a garden will be illegal. Oh, yeah. Or you'll have to have a permit. You won't be allowed to grow your own food. Like, if you fuck with the the food supply by growing your own shit, Mm -hmm. eating your own food, which everybody, I, I don't, we don't have a garden. I don't like. I don't farm. I suck at that shit. So, um, I just, it's not something that I, I, you know, I I feel comfortable enough with the stuff that we can buy that, and I do try to think, like, I'm not looking to go, like, off the fucking grid. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm looking, you know, there's still, the grocery stores still need our, I I don't want to, because I've changed the way I eat, like, I still want to support, you know, people who provide those products. So, but yeah, man, I mean, it's, it has, there's no question it is a, it's a, it's a comprehensive, I drink a lot more fucking water. Yeah. I mean, like. There was a time, It's dude, definitely last a, week. like a compounding thing, I, and I, I'm sure, like, pretty much anything that can help your digestion and, in, like, your gut health will yeah. pretty much increase the rest of your overall body health. Well, that is the 100% dude, most important you thing you can look, do for yourself. Like, <clears throat> if you if you look into this, like, there is, there's a documentary called The Gut, The mm-hmm. Gut, The Second Brain. Like, so in this, they talk about this, this fuck kind of fucked with my head, really, because... Yeah. You think you're making, you're like, oh, chips, that sounds good. Mm. Yeah, I know you're talking. I know, I know you think that about. you want chips. It ain't you that wants chips. Mm-hmm. Like, it's something inside your gut that wants those fucking chips. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, is that we're... We're a culture. Like, yeah, our body... A universe. Our like, body is like a, a biological culture, you know? Yes. And whatever yeah. you feed your body, you grow the bacteria inside of your stomach to feed off of what you give it your intest- right your upper and- so that's why people become more addicted to like sugary foods and and alcohols and and uh you know shit like that mm-hmm. dr pepper and shit because they start craving those things because because of the uh bacteria that they have now grown inside of their gut mm-hmm. from being like that bacteria grows because it has to be there to break that shit down so yeah. then that stuff craves more of that energy and so once you stop feeding that and you start feeding yourself vegetables and like you know uh uh, grass-fed beef and just you know shit like that whatever you, whatever you want it to be just more organic things in general and less shitty food and, and junk food the the cultures inside of your gut change to digest that so now you become oh man you know what sounds good good as fuck right now like a fucking kale salad or you know whatever the fuck you're eating, you're feeding yourself well, so it's kind of like a feedback loop you part know? of part of uh, you know for me when we talk about sustainability like <clears throat> i st- I really stopped looking at food as like some type of uh, pleasure. Yeah, I stopped like it's yeah. a reward. Like, oh man, I can't fucking wait. We're going to fucking Chili's, wherever, <laughs> wherever to have you know these killer steaks or something. Yeah, like we look at shit as a re- oh, I've had a hard day. Like I deserve this. You deserve it because you want it. Yeah, just fucking plain and simple. Like you want it, have it. Like, it's the dopamine. You don't receptors, need the yeah. fucking. You don't need like. Like, oh, I got to jump through this hoop, this hoop, this hoop. Now I can have a beer. Fuck that noise. Yeah. When I drank, like if I was fucking, it was time to drink when I was ready to have a fucking drink. Right. I didn't need like, oh, okay. Now. Uh, if you challenge, if you make the challenges to overcome the, the reward, then you train your body to think Yeah, I mean, way. I'm. we're all Pavlov's dogs. Because we all, that like shit. that, I, I know what you mean by that, because uh, I'll sit there and reward myself with, with drinking for anything, good or bad. Like, they sucked. Let's I need a beer. A beer. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's go have a beer. You know what? F- badass day. We just fucking did it, dude. Let's go have a beer. Right. It's like, when do we not have a beer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, and it is. I, I do. I miss the thing. I'll tell you what I don't miss. I miss, I miss like sitting around drinking and partying. Do you, do you feel like you ever, I'm going to get to the question, but before I'm going to make a statement, I feel like sometimes there's this, level of clarity between x amount of drinks where it's oh, like man i'm a fucking prophet bro yeah and then one more and i'm like an idiot yes you know what i mean like I there's one exactly part where i'm on this wavelength where i can like hone in and i can listen i can fucking just look in your eyes and jump in and start fucking jerking mm-hmm. off your little eye socket things back there and i got i figure it out i just know you I understand I'm, I'm in yep. tune i mean that's the and same then, reason uh then i'm like finish this one let me get another one and after that next one i'm like 
That's Dude, it. Dude, that's just gay. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm over it now. Pink isn't well. He stayed back at the yeah. hotel and he sent us along and as I'm, a surrogate I mean, band. that is a benefit to alcohol, and that's a lot of the reasons why so many religions and so many, like, um, you know, ceremonies involve drinking certain amounts of alcohol in certain types because of the fact that it does, it, it opens you up to, like, be that way, you yeah. know, to have that kind of clarity. And, uh, like, civilizations back in the day got that shit dialed down. Now we do everything in excess, so now we just take it and it's like every day, you know. Hey, well, let's have that's it. the that I think now alcohol to me is it is only social lubricant. Yeah, I don't like it. Does it does? Uh, I think when you talk about like ayahuasca or peyote, right. those DMT, I think that those were very spiritual, uh, you know, altered states. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Like I drank, I, all of, everybody drinks for that very fleeting fucking period mm -hmm. that is like, oh man, I'm one with mm -hmm. fucking everything. Like yeah. it all just comes together. And, the, and you're, it's like, it's usually if, if you could do like a, a, a visual of it, it's like <clears throat> you're balancing on a barrel and it's like, and it's like no slippage, total, everything's yeah. there. You have that one more drink and then it's like kink and it, every, the whole Everything fucking falls. bottom falls right out of it. And it does. So that's the thing is. is Drinking's like, like playing Jenga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, for me, it always, it's yeah. the thing. So we when like when I stopped drinking, this was really like, this was eye opening. Cause I'm one, I'm fucking like drunk. I'm super fucking opinionated. And I Me try too. to keep my opinions to myself for the most part, unless I know you and I, I feel like us talking about it will have value, any yeah. value or yeah, it would be appreciated. <clears throat> um, not drunk. <laughs> like I'm fucking like you know it's I knew the people I was gonna fucking beat up yeah I've been I've been thinking verbally, about you for two yeah. weeks exactly you're here yeah. you're getting oh it. yeah yeah Loading trust it up. as soon as I have the fucking right amount of margaritas or right amount of tequila like I'm gonna fucking come at you with both fucking barrels <laughs> like spider monkey with a gun like yeah. and not like not physical but like you're really like verbal warfare yeah yeah I knew like earlier in the day before I started drinking I thought you know I'm thinking about like oh fucking Steve is such a fucking asshole man I'm like and I knew I'm hanging out with Steve I'm like oh fuck I gotta deal with this motherfucker tonight no yeah. no it's not even that it's not in a it's not in a way like like a uh, I did realize that it, like, if I thought it, I was like, oh, God, don't think that. You're going to get fucked up and be around this person. And you're not going to say anything, not going to say anything. And that fucking mole on your cheek, dude, <laughs> like, it's just fucking, <laughs> it's a no, 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 green light. Get that fucking mole, Timbo. Like, yeah. I, you know, I have no fucking, you know, and, I, and that shit is entertaining for people on the periphery. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I, so it was when I stopped drinking, people were like, oh man, you're not drinking? Bummer. Like, you know. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Yeah, yeah. well, because it is. It's entertaining to watch fucking, you know. People go at it. And they, yeah, well, not like. We've got an audience all the time. You know, my brother go at it. Yeah. Yeah, so, and well, people are not, like, why aren't you guys arguing more? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't want to make it sound like it's just arguing. It's just fucking like. You know, you know the nitpicking, yeah. hassling. Yeah, it's yeah. really like fucking. Oh man, fuck this guy. Like, you know. Yeah, you get a lot of shit off your chest that maybe you should, but in in a better way. Yes, well, and that's what. Know? So what I found is is that like that I hurt people's feelings because I listen, listen, listen. I listen, man. Like when you're yeah. talking, I'm listening to you. Like I really listen. The shitty thing is, is the drunk me will fucking absolutely take the shit that you've you've talked to me about in. You know, and maybe a special time, mm -hmm. and I'll come back and fucking hit you over the head with it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that to me is counterproductive to, I, I had somebody come over to the house one time, and this was, this, this is real shit. Like, I, you know, I don't share this story that often because it's, because it wasn't particularly, you know, it was really enlightening but for me, but. For them, not so much. Well, no, <laughs> for me, it, it, it's just not something that's, you know, super flattering to talk about. <clears throat> but this person came over, 
And, you know, at some point I just started giving him shit. Like I was like, ah, you know, fuck, man, you fucking need to try this or do that or whatever. And they got their shit together. Like they, in the, in this conversation, they're like, Hey man, you know what you do? You fucking, you ambush people. You invite people over here and you fucking lift them up so you can fuck, so you're teeing them up and then you just fucking hit them. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm drunk when he says this and I'm like, Oh man, you know, probably oh, man, fuck that shit though. Like, yeah. but I remember, I still remember that. I remembered it the next morning or maybe later that night. And I was like, I do do that. Like I absolutely do that shit and it's not fucking cool. So when it comes down for me to not drinking, there are deep seated things that like that shit doesn't, that doesn't come out when I'm doing what I should be doing. Like yeah. when I stopped drinking, I started the magazine. I, you know, I, I had been floundering. Like, I feel like sometimes like you, if you're not doing what you should be doing, you're just, that, those, those are the people that are hurting the most, that are the biggest assholes that like, you know, if somebody is really just, you know, fuck yeah. this, fuck that, they're hurting. Like they're, you know, it's tough to see that when they're just fucking constantly in your, you're like, shut the fuck up, man. Shut yeah. up. Shut the fuck up. I would also say that sometimes what happens is um, you get overly confident whenever you are drunk and you have like a, uh, a good take on something they haven't uh, quite addressed yet. Like yeah. say, say I'm drunk. I'm going to tell you how I feel about your situation in your life. Right. And maybe for this one time, this magical time, I'm right. Right. And then the next day you come up, hey, man, like, that was good advice, uh, good advice from you. And the next day I'm like, all right, getting drunk again, telling everybody all the yeah, shit I know about re the Yeah, well, the, the, the thing, too, is, is that what, what, we need, what we need to do collectively, mm. or it would benefit humanity to do this more, is that. Yeah. But I think that when you, it wasn't until, like, uh, I started talking to women about like men's sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. I didn't really realize. I didn't. I didn't really grasp the the female perspective. So, for me, I think that the more we talk, the more that we genuinely talk, and and equally, if not more importantly, listen to people that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a lot of times people start a conversation, it's all predetermined in their mind. Like, mm. you know, in doing these, <clears throat> I remember the first time I did Dan's podcast, I was like, what is this shit going to be like? like? Yeah. You know, and, and having done them now, like, you just fucking let it go. Like, you just, yeah. you don't You have, don't know where you're going. No, you don't, and you don't worry. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, you ask something, you ask something like we talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like <clears throat> it's written in stone. It's not like, I don't know. Like I, it's very free flowing. And I, and I think that for me, you know, that is, I think the importance of these podcasts, one or, or primarily is that people see how much we're all alike. Mm hmm. Like that's and they also see how much, you know, bullshit gets in the way of having these kind of conversations, right. you know, just even right. yourself and your own ego and stuff. And right. It's so much easier. Like podcasts are easier because of the fact that it, it kind of immediately takes that away because you're like, I don't know what I'm talking about. We're just going to go in here and do it, you know, right. because you don't have that in your mind of like, this is how this conversation is going to go. It removes that whole lock on that. Well, well, and you can kind of understand and, and listen a lot better. You know, right. especially for me, like I have ADHD, but we do like these fucking podcasts and shit. I'm engaged the whole time, you know, two, three, four hours. And I've, I could never do that outside of this. Well, see, you couldn't. I'll say this. I try to point this stuff out. Like you say you can't and you won't be able to. Because, uh, yeah, like what we were talking about. Right. Before, you're yeah. literally you. You're saying like you've <clears throat> given yourself the freedom to not be constrained by ADHD in this environment. Right. So that means like, you could apply that I'm, everywhere else. You could apply it fucking literally right. every... This is our problem. You know what your problem is, man? <laughs> no, no, but I have a feeling you're going to fucking tell me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing is that you fucking... 
if we just relax around that shit, like the, the thing that I, the thing that I like the most about conversations, especially like the many I found myself in my life where they have been guys that are in a better place. They are, or I wouldn't say in a better place. Yeah, they're in a better place. They might be more financially successful or more confident or more right. in a place of like, uh, they figured a couple things out. Those guys, when they, they when you have those conversations, and I remember, you know, sitting with Gary at Other Side Customs when I worked for him forever and just listening to this dude talk for hours. And he would tell me, you know, you're, you're being a little fag at this or you're doing that or whatever the case may be. Right. And it all res resonated with me. But if we stop having conversations, it's almost like I'm trying to be the devil's advocate to our conversation right of now. Of course. Like, we do need to be able to talk to each other, or at least I think so, in a way that's like, perspectives right you may look at me and go like you know what jason man we've been hanging out we've been talking for two hours and i think you got a little bit of this going on and i'm like maybe i'll be like no no man it's not that it's not i, I maybe i'm painting the wrong picture here you know what i mean right but realistically when you when you start putting out all these thoughts these the these you don't realize how stupid they sound until you throw them across the table and mm -hmm. look at that dude's face going like yeah dude you're a little bitch <laughs> yeah, it's you know like, I mean? don't, well, it's I, infant I don't. ideas, you know, it's, it's new ideas, it's it's like, you have, especially when you're, like, talking about, you know, profound shit or anything, there's, you're developing as a human being, you're making ideas as you go, and they're, like, there's some that we put out that are, like, new, they're not thought out completely yet, you know, we well, haven't figured it out. but that's how they work, they work themselves out that way, but that's, to me, you... I don't know. No agenda. Like it's right. uh, if we just fucking or let shit organically happen. This goes. This is directly proportionate to our creative work. Like mm -hmm. you can't. You can only micromanage shit. You know, to what degree? Like, do you want to control it or do you want to just like you know have the baseline information and and see where it goes mm -hmm. like you know there's there's no question i start shooting somebody some people i shoot i'm like there is just no fucking connection here like i yeah. am not for whatever reason them me you know something they said 20 minutes before that like you know i, I can't let it go or whatever yeah. like, i don't move beyond it mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we all have that i i just think that like if you know and this isn't I guess in my life, I'm like, like, okay, you can believe that. Like, I don't, I don't see where, like the division that we're experiencing right now, we don't have to, like, you can fucking believe whatever you want. Nobody's saying you can't like with the mask thing, everybody should wear a mask. You should wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh yeah, but you fucking, this is, this is the thing. Like it goes back to easy riders, like where the, where Jack Nicholson is talking to, to Dennis yeah. Hopper about freedom and people seeing free people. They don't like, you know, people who live not feeling free, they don't like seeing free people. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Oh, you're going to do, you're going to do that. That's going to affect me. Yeah. You know what? It's going to affect you it's whether also, you fucking, whether you think it is or not. Like, yeah. It's, it's also kind of just like what we were saying earlier. It's like a mirror, you know, they right. just they see where they're lacking in their lives and they hate it. They don't like it. Yeah. Misery well, loves because company. they thought that they were free, but they, they never that, you know, you posted that clip on your Instagram and it was, uh, I've seen that movie a hundred times. I love it. It's kind of hard <laughs> to watch old movies cause you don't really get their art, right? <laughs> you know, right? but you, but it is, there is good stuff in there and it's, um, that thing I remember you posted and I watched, I was like, yeah, you know, I remember watching this movie and seeing this, but like listening to it now, it's like, fuck man. Like, that's always that. That's kind of always a thing. That that's all the the hippie movement, the the love movement, all that stuff is people, you know, fighting wars to say that we're free. But then real free people, free people come out that aren't paying taxes and aren't doing this. They're just right. kind of right. making their own little communes on and hate Ashbury, those type of things. And like that pisses off all the people that thought they were free. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because it redefines or, what freedom means. It doesn't. You know, the thing is, is it doesn't like. If I think if we're if we look at if I take your feelings into consideration and I do what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck that may be, like 
I'm taking, I think that the problem is, is that people feel like you're not taking their, con, their feelings into consideration. Oh, you know what, you're just thinking about yourself. Uh, actually, I'm not. I'm kind of thinking about everybody and I'm choosing to do what I fucking want to do. Yeah. I, nobody, not one fucking human being on this globe, nobody gets out alive. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. <laughs> We're all going to fucking die. And, and, and I'm, I'm almost certain, very, very few people, that when they're on their deathbed are like, I'm here, right on. Mm -hmm. It's time to check out. If, I think if you've lived proportionately and you've understood proportionately, you are there. I mean, this, this whole fucking thing is a giant exercise. Life is to learn how to die gracefully. Mm -hmm. Like this, any, every moment, this podcast will come to an end and it will be over. We'll have exchanged, you know, there's, the, so every, we're moving, you know, it's birth, life, death, birth, life, death, birth, life, every fucking moment. It's all moving like this. Everything. Mm -hmm. The trip. Oh, fuck. We had a great time. Now it's over. But no, I'm back to reality. Like. It, that shit doesn't have to be like, the thing is, is that like we assign, oh, here's life, here's death, here's life, here's death, you're wrong, you're right. How about fucking everybody just chills the fuck out and lets people, let people like. Figure shit out and do things. Well, the thing is, is that we, yeah, I think that we, we relax and, and we could use some serious fucking relaxation. Like everybody's pretty fucking tense now. I mean, in a, you know, within the United States, like I, I, f I feel like a lot of it has to do with the fact that a lot of people have nothing else that they strive to be or do. So they identify with yeah. like a, a party, you know, Republican, Democrat, whatever. And then that becomes their life. And then now they have a purpose, which they didn't have before. And their purpose is to, you know, fuck the other side you know they suck they don't know what they're talking about these people you know instead of being like okay my goals as a human being is i just want to be in shape and da, 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 and my purpose is to help people or whatever you know right then that way they in a way people becoming more selfish kind of helps the whole world because well see the thing is i'll disagree in that it depends on the if you take care of yourself so that you can look after the whole. Exactly. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I wasn't trying to, you know. Yeah, not the people who fucking cut you off in traffic and shit. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's a different uh, kind like of Like me selfish. fucking getting there, like, I need to get there before you need to get yeah. there. Yeah, I think, I think people should to, be. We're all going yeah. somewhere. I think people should be more selfish with their happiness, I guess I should say. So whatever makes them happy, they need to do this. So then that way they can bring that happiness to the table of what is, you know, the, 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 just say America, you know, just like in a relationship, if, if your partner is making themselves happy and they're not relying on you to make them happy and you're making yourself happy and you're not relying on them, you guys kind of come to the table and you both have a plate of your own fucking happiness and you can just put it together and it works as opposed to like, if I was relying on them to do everything for me, you know, now I'm mad at them because they're not taking my feelings into consideration. Right. Yeah. You know, well that, you know, you, yeah, you <clears throat> want to, the fortified viewpoint, like in conversations, you have people, it's like, like, I need to get my point across. Like, you need to hear me. You need to listen to me. Motherfucker, I don't, I don't need to do shit except breathe air, drink water, eat food. Like, mm -hmm. these are all choices. I, I want to listen to you. It, so the thing is, is, I, you know, when we, I think when we start talking about that shit, like it's, like it, it behooves us all to right. fucking like the bigger picture. Like the bigger picture is, I don't know. It will. Yeah. I mean this, this whole country's, I, I look at things like this, uh, like sports, right? You, you got those friends or those people, you know, that just, they're, they're diehard sports fans, like all the Cowboys, you see them crying when they lose. You see these videos of people that put so much worth into what other people are doing. And you can kind of equate that to these guys that like sports so much that that's like defines them. Right. Are the same kind of people, maybe not the same people, but the same kind of people who do that with politics. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 
there's a team, my team's winning or losing, it's fuck everybody else. But this one, I don't care who Philadelphia just drafted, I'm a Cowboys fan, you know. Right. And and what happens is like they don't I wouldn't say I don't want to generalize and say that these dudes don't have anything else going on in life, but sometimes that might be their escape, just like maybe a beer is my escape or photography or video games are my escape. But right. it just sucks when like you people don't like they allow some something else that they don't have control over to dictate so much of their well being and happiness. Yeah, well, it, maybe right. maybe it's a it's like a self worth thing. You know, maybe they value other people more than they value themselves, so they put those people's um, lives or abilities or talents on a pedestal above their own, and so now they become like they're they're living vicariously through these other people. You know. I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, finding someone that's doing badass shit and being inspired by them. Mm. You know, like, um, you know, watching Tiger Woods at, you know, his prime just fucking sinking putts and, you know, hitting the green every time. Yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, this dude's, I'm glad I'm witnessing this. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got to witness Jordan's last crossover and shot in 97, <clears throat> you know, when he hit, when he, you know, when he was actually still on the Bulls. I'm glad I got to witness that in person. Am I a basketball fan? Yeah. Am I watching and follow along every game and all into this controversy with LeBron and, you know, telling the president to resign and all this shit? Like, absolutely not. I have, have no state. That's not basketball anymore. Yeah. That's that's politics now dripping over. Like, it's, it's filled up the cup of our lives so much. It's spilling over to every corporation, every sports thing. Everything that else is, that our attention goes to is yeah. now – Politics are spilling into it, and I and I don't. I, that's the part of it that I don't like the most. Because fifteen years ago, we didn't give a fuck how the NFL voted. No, and we still don't to the day. But somewhere along the line, they felt like they that we needed to know that. Well, you know? uh, yeah, it's yeah, man. I I don't. I, it's fucking cancel culture. Yeah, uh, that I don't. I don't dig the fucking whole like. <clears throat> The legal system, you had due process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, like, I think that this was a construct. I think that someone thought it would be a good idea that it's a drag to have to drag people through court and then maybe let a jury decide, let's just fuck them up. So well, now I mean, you come out, now, now you, someone lobs a grenade over at someone and fucking everybody splits. Like they were relying on all of yeah. their sponsors and all that shit. And somebody makes an accusation and we're not suddenly hardy enough. Do, do, do the things, do you really give a fuck that Bill Clinton fucked a chick in the fucking Oval Office with a fucking cigar? I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. Like to me, is that an impeachable offense? I'm going to guess he wasn't the first fucking dude to fuck a chick yeah, in right. the fucking Oval Office. I, yeah. I don't, you know. My point is, is that like, we all, we, it just seems like, like we've have this fucking knack for like beating people up over mm -hmm. shit that we do. Like, you yeah. know, it, you're supposed to be better than us. Yeah. It was, what the you're fuck? The president. Dude? You're so supposed to be a, when it, when the cancel culture thing first started happening, it did serve a decent purpose, you know, but you can't have good things without bad things to come with it. And just like anything that happens, you know, in the world, um, shit falls out of balance. So just like how we didn't like having to do the whole due process shit, and it was like, well, this fucking da da da. -da. You do the cancel culture shit, and there's like, okay, now we're being able to out people who are like rapists and shit like this. But then on the other hand, you get people who are taking advantage of the cancel culture, and they're like, this guy's a rapist, and that guy really well, didn't see, do this shit. Is, this is the thing is, this is this is the deal with. Law. And then they don't have time. They don't. There's no way they can defend themselves. This guy's a racist. <clears throat> well, now you can't defend yourself. Listen, this is this is the problem with entering something like you have no. I think that people are finding. Like somebody introduces this and, and the reason law was the way it was is, is you had to make a case. Mm -hmm. If you had an interaction, we'll use rape as an example. <clears throat> you had an interaction and this person says you raped them. You said you didn't rape them. Uh, you had to legally prove this. Mm -hmm. Like... Well, yeah, then, and fucking, then you, gotta, you know, there's people that bring up the whole like, well, rape kits, kits aren't really that effective. And, you know, back in the day, their women's 
say against men was just not shit. And, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I completely... There's always a defense for every fucking thing. Yeah, but the the answer isn't that I get to say whatever I... The, the problem... I think what people are finding is is the people who... who orchestrate these modes mm-hmm. and these ways, these actions, I think that... And this is very... This is incredibly documented with a lot of other aspects of... of uh, mm-hmm systems of belief you create this thing to liberate what you 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 have this uh like i'm going to introduce this into being so that i can get what i like you have your needs for this particular right, mode so it starts right like but what happens thing. is is then it takes on a mind of its own mm. via like everybody sees that they can say whatever the fuck they want now. And what you have is, is you have no fact checkers. Mm. Like you don't have anybody looking at. So to me, you have to the voting, to the, the corporations, you have people that are just cutting ties with people at the mention of like anything. Yeah, that, this guy said a racist comment 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny. Like there was a, me- I saw this meme of this little kid in uh, with his hand on a Hooters chick's tit, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it, it the meme was like, "Little does this kid know he'll never be able to run for president." Yeah, exactly. And that that is literally the point. That is fucking. That couldn't be any more <clears throat> pointy. It's funny, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's exactly the the result of. So you have people that are like, yeah, we're going to shame this person. We're going to shame this group out of existence. Well, that's what, what, what it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the people that are picking these politics and these sports teams, right? Right. They fall into that category of, you know what my job is, what I'm put on this earth to do? Call out bullshit. Mm. You know, and that's all they're doing. They're looking for the next one. And that, and that becomes their identity, their culture, their, what gives them self-worth right. is, to, is to point people out and play that game and and there's no end to that like it's just like i it's like the attention. i like the yeah. fact that i feel like i just won who's next yeah and another problem is one? like when you go looking for shit you're always going to find it because you can just make it up in your head well that's a, that but that literally is that's <clears throat> the whole fucking crux of this shit is is mm-hmm. that like theories all of you know when you we, when people are like yeah but where's the science Okay, motherfucker, you understand that everything starts as a theory. Right. And real scientists aren't looking to prove their, some are looking to prove their theory. But what you should be doing is looking for information. Like the information should paint the bigger picture, not your fucking theory. So to me, like you have, that's why you have like all of these with foods, with drugs, like everything make it all fucking legal mm-hmm. I, I you know the thing is is if someone is there a problem the, the bigger problem to me is that you're fucking arresting everybody and throwing them in prison mm-hmm. yeah. the problem and i'm not a i'm not a defund the police guy but i don't need fucking some dude riding around telling me my fucking tail lights out like fuck off right yeah. I don't so need they, that. They I should... don't need you giving me a fucking ticket because my tail lights out. But the thing is, is what that does is it opens up a door, like for me to really get at what I'm looking for. Have you been drinking? Mm-hmm. Do you have any weed? Right. You know, fuck off, motherfucker. Like, yeah. Go fucking like. There are people committing real crimes right now, deputy dog, and you're not fucking. You're not doing shit. Exactly. Like, it's it's not focused enough to where it should be in. Like, the whole defund the police thing, like, I don't completely understand it in general. I right. feel like they should be trained more, like, closer to, like, how the military is trained in the sense that they should have, like, not militarizing the police. Yeah. But to the sense of where they should be held to a point to where they know how to de-escalate situations without yes. having to be afraid and be scared. And that's why they shoot somebody because they're, they're scared. Well, you know, dude, they're the not thing, trained. You can't they're question. out of shape. As soon as they start there, they need to get punched <clears throat> in the face and they, exactly. they got to not be able to react. And there should yes, be so more of a mental, well, the, there should the be more is, of a mental thing. Like this should be like, they need to check your mentality, not just your physicality. You know what I mean? It is the, and they barely it, check physicalities. And I shook my head at the military thing because the because the military's job is to fucking kill enemies. That's it. Right. And the enemy is whoever the fucking generals say they are. 
when the president says, that's the enemy, motherfuckers. Right. Attack. Yeah, yeah definitely like, don't militarize the police, but yeah. teach them to not yeah. be... Well, I think that what the 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 whole fucking mentality <clears throat> of the police used to be like if you go back to Andy Griffith, like yeah. he wasn't there to fucking throw. He open he left the door open for Otis, man. Otis could come in on Saturday nights when he was fucking drinking moonshine, and and sleep it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, like you. Yeah. Now you can't sleep in the park. Right, you can't fucking when do you're anything. Up, yeah, can't sleep. You're in. trying not to drive. Now yeah. it's illegal yep. to do that. So well, if like, you got in your car, if your car, like your keys, all this shit, like those, if they want, this is the thing is, is that, and these dudes know this, it's, uh, it's just fucking power. Like you can't. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that like when you shoot somebody in the back, motherfucker, they're running away from you. Period. Yeah. I don't care who the fuck they are. None of that shit. Like. The threat is over for you. They're running the fuck away. But what isn't over, the attack, the assault is still happening to your power, to your sense mm-hmm. of fucking entitled self. Yeah. How dare you run away from me? You weren't threatened for your fucking life. I'm not threatening your life by running away from you. So then it becomes a pride thing and it's not so much pride, like a... Dude. like hundred like percent about fucking pride. Like yeah. when I say to you, can you tell me how this is, how this is legal, what you're doing? You don't tell me. I got this badge. I got this gun. Yeah, big fucking deal. You're wrong. You don't know the law. And the Mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, is when you boil this down, their job isn't to know the law. Right. I mean, like they know penal codes and shit like that, but they don't know the law. That's where the lawyer, like they get the, someone makes an arrest. I don't like the way you look. They arrest you. And then they fucking go to the DA and they say, can we make a case against this motherfucker? Mm. Because we don't like the way he looks? No. Kick him loose. So they should definitely be trained to learn more of the law and, and things like that I think sort. that they, I think that genuinely, <laughs> I, the, the, the idea of defunding the police is that we don't need people out morally looking for what's good and what's bad. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of that has to do with, like, the financial gain from that, too. You know what I mean? Like, Of course it is. There's a financial gain to, you know, arrest X amount of people. You know, uh, my my wife's dad was an OCHP, like, rode FXR and then the KZ1000 yeah, and all right. that shit. And he's in town. We were He was here Thursday. We were talking about some of his, uh, his time because he was a CHP during, like, Rodney King in L.A., by the way. Right, right. In L.A. when that happened, when the fucking shootout took place in downtown L.A. that was, like, they made the movie Heat About and shit like that. Yeah. He was like, man, like, it was crazy how much, how many people on the force were kind of more racist, in a sense, versus the, you know, versus the latter. And there's, like, he's like, man, there was, like, a bad apples, and there was, like, guys like me who just wanted to go to work and then go home. And, you know, people, some people took their jobs way more seriously than others. And he was like, he would get in trouble because he only rested one person a day and only wrote eight tickets and only helped out with this many traffic violations or or traffic incidents. Because, you know, that's their job, too, to kind of do that. And their quotas get demanding to where it's like, okay, what'd you do between this hour and this hour? Because they have to do all this shit. That whole aspect, that whole fucking aspect could disappear. Yeah. Like we could, yeah, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> Jamie Jamie found this article about New York City having to because of budgets. I don't know when this was, but they they had they took money away from the police, so there were less officers on the streets, and crime. And you can say uh, it sounds like it would be obvious. Crime went down because there's less officers. Uh, yeah. It's like uh, if you don't test that many people, there's less COVID there's less, cases. Yeah, there's less people <laughs> looking for bullshit. See, this is a th- it, it, all of this is 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 spot fucking on. You're not out there provoking fucking people. Like, who cares that they're selling weed? Really, who fucking cares? It, it really is a like, you know, we have this whole oh you can't well you can't allow that. Why? Smirnoff sells alcohol. Mm. Like there are more people fucked up over fucking alcohol than anything else. It's like pit, same thing with pit bulls. Pit bulls, they're fucking terrible. German shepherds are fucking statistically the dog to fucking bite the fucking shit out of you. Yeah. German shepherd bites are the fucking 
when you look at dog bites, it isn't fucking any type of terrier. It's a yeah. fucking German Shepherd. So the thing is, is that nobody wants to really look at what's really going on. Like, mm. when you... Well, I, the assessment of, like, how... So, society, right? Right. You know, everything, a photographer, we're, you're looking at a... At a at something that's maybe 120 years old, 130 years old, maybe 40, something like that. It was 1850, so we're you know I mean 170. 150, yeah, 100, 150 to 170. So you're looking at a at a process that's very young, right? Right. It's a career for you. It's a career for many people. Um, me as a painter, custom paint is only or painting has only been something that's done maybe 120 years now. Right. I mean, people have painted forever, right? But yeah, I was gonna say, they, yeah, yeah, they've painted for fucking. But they like painted the fucking the inside autom- of caves. For yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the automotive side of it, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that yeah, side yeah, yeah, of, yeah, of like course. painting, is only X amount. You know, cause yeah, because we are stemmed from automotive stuff. Right. Um, society itself, like, it's really crazy to see that, like. And I'm not saying this out of something that I think or know is better. I'm just asking the question, how is it possible that that things couldn't need another course correction? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. As, as much people as there are now. Like, I was talking to my my wife's dad about this the other day. I was like, man, like, what, what would it have been like to be growing up in a smaller town in the 70s and be out, you're a high schooler, and you get caught drinking, right? I can tell you that. It's like, <laughs> don't do that. All right, you need to get home, Timmy. Yep. You know what I mean? That's and then exactly you get what home or they take the you home. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, yeah. hey, let's ruin this kid's life for the next 15 years. 15 years, they can yeah. fucking ruin your life. So this is the thing. In California, you your, your, uh, if you got a DUI, <clears throat> seven years. It was exp- that, like it's gone. It's not on your record. Yeah. So the crimes, as long as you're not committing felonies, the crimes on your record, it was like seven years. Yeah. And that was it. Now, anything you fucking do, like this is all, you know, when you look at why people are leaving California, this is why. Yeah. You know, they, like, I just saw this thing about like Matthew McConaughey. I, I forget who it was that, that they, they were talking with, but it was they quoted Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey as saying like, hey, look, you decided to come to Texas. Yeah. You could have gone to fucking 49 other states and been in the United States, but you came to Texas embrace texas Mm -hmm. we don't need fucking we don't need look what you did to fucking california yeah but they're not going to admit that though that's the problem about it is like they because it's this self-righteous indignation like i'm right man you know joe rogan's here in texas now and he says it like i'm gonna vote the way it is here so it stays like this here that's why i came here right but that you know like like that politics and identity politics is so deeply ingrained into people that they don't want to see their own flaws in their own parties. Of course. You know what I mean? So they're like, they're going to leave California because of taxation. And somehow, you know, people out there will flip it and turn around like it's Trump's fault. And if you go to fucking Venice Beach right now, you would think Trump shitted on them. Right. Even though all that homeless is 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 product of liberal policies. Of course it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they won't admit that. No. It's yeah. Trump's fault. Well, Trump. But the thing is, is I think that I think right now we're at a point where people are really seeing. I, I think people have been duped, you know, and they've been happily duped. Yeah, but they don't want to admit it. They're though. like seeing the consequences of their actions. Yeah, I think now I yeah. think now people are really starting to look at like, oh, fuck, I might be a part of the problem. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't mean that with like conservatives or liberals because really to me when you boil this i I remember having this my dad's military Mm -hmm. you know was military he's dead now but super pro you know not like uber right wing he wasn't a marine he was in the air force so but still a republican and we're sitting we were sitting at my place and i had a clinton gore banner up behind us and this couple walked by and they were like, oh man, that looks nice. Like, except the banner you got behind you and my dad, we started laughing and my dad was like, yeah, I'm sitting here under duress. So we started talking and I said, listen, man, if everybody, if everybody governed themselves, I mean, and I've said this for a long time uh, before this conversation with my dad, if everybody governed themselves, we wouldn't need governors. Like yeah. if you fucking, if you look at like a like humankind, 
and you like, oh, this might hurt some people, this might not. I mean, if you just took this shit into consideration and made your decision, not just based on what you want. So I said like, oh man, you know, if like everybody governed themselves, we wouldn't need governors. My dad said, uh, be careful, man, because that's kind of the idea of Republican, the Republican thought is, is less government, less people telling you right. what to do, less regulation, you making the fucking choices, like make the fucking, yeah. like you are given the opportunity to make the right fucking choice and you should be held accountable if you don't make the right choice. But just random fucking like, this is what's right, I know what's right for people. Motherfucker, you don't know what's, yeah. you know, the, the 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 real problem so and this is this is this is a little sketchy to bring up but so one of the chopper guys had this meme that was like it was Lenny Kravitz and he had, it was like this thing that said like well we've seen what men can do with the world let's turn it over to women and let them do it and I said mm, the problem isn't that it's a man or a woman the problem is fucking power and power corrupts Absolutely. All the time. Yeah. Like, like, so when you put a human being in charge, it doesn't matter whether it's a man or it's a woman. A woman isn't going to suddenly make, like maybe in the beginning, but once she realizes there are no checks and balances of her, she's going to do whatever the fuck she wants and she's yeah. going to be corrupt. She's going she's gonna to make some dude in there stick a cigar up her pussy. <laughs> you know I mean? And it'll be perfectly okay. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like uh, I think Rogan talks about this a lot about using a panel having a panel of leaders that are good in their respective areas to kind of, instead of having one president, like I am fucking Jace, the president of the United States, it's, no, it's three of us. Me, I am more well, of a scientist. Kinda, it is kind of like that. I don't, <coughs> I don't believe, I don't believe since Kennedy, and maybe we've talked about this, I, I don't believe that since Kennedy, I mean, you, the start of the 60s, all the way through the 60s, like if you were the voice of change and opposition or you were looking to do something that like Kennedy came into Kennedy was elected and was like, okay, cool. We don't need the U S treasury. We don't need like, Oh, you won't fucking play game with me, play games or you don't, you won't come to bat with me. Like, well, I'll go ahead and fucking start. Like I'll find five new fucking steel corporations. Mm -hmm. Like he started fucking with the infrastructure of like the power you know, the, the military the industrial complex. Yeah. Really. And how'd that end up? Like yeah. how the sixties fucking, they fucking just absolutely snuffed anybody that was like, Oh, some lone gunman did it. Conveniently. Yeah. It was every fucking voice that was in opposition <laughs> to things that may, that were going to make valiant changes mm -hmm. in humankind in the United States. So I think by the seventies, everybody's like, uh, check please as far as like you know speaking out yeah. yeah really like I think it was which was a huge thing for like Hoover and the FBI and you know once Nixon like the, so my ultimate point is is that like you have Kennedy Johnson Nixon Nixon fucking is impeached and resigns uh, I think I know he resigns but <clears throat> he Gerald resigns Ford before he gets impeached I believe yeah it right is. Uh, the power of the presidency, I, I, I believe that Kennedy was the last president to truly wield an executive sword, a full fledged executive sword. I think now, I think you have people that, that mean well, but they, they can't do shit. I, I don't think. Yeah, that, I agree a hundred percent with that, you know, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Instead of. Instead of having all this chain of command, like this House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House, and this person, and all these like things, you know, that's that's the funniest thing about it. It's like when people talk shit, like, "Oh, this this country's gone to shit because of Trump." Like, whoa, what? yeah, it's isn't it not? It just, didn't go to shit in three years, dude. <laughs> yeah, is it like because of one person, or is it because of the whole? this whole house, right? you know what I mean? This whole process that you guys made. Mm -hmm. So that's where it gets real weird. And that's why I hate those conversations where people are like, you know, like they know, oh, it's all yeah. Trump's fault. Like yeah. he's not one dude, you know, it, Obama wasn't one dude sitting here yeah. pulling strings. It wasn't just him doing drone strikes. That was military shit. Right. He wasn't like, 
hey, you know what? We need to go fucking blow these dudes up. They're pissing me off, talking shit on Twitter and stuff like this about me. Right. Let's go blow them up. Yeah. No, he was like, hey, you know, these military people are like, yo, we need to kill this guy. We can't physically go into this country, but we can shoot him from this fucking remote control thing right quick. It's just that those things aren't like a sniper. It's a fucking bomb. Right. It's, I mean, it does. It. I think that it... Yeah. Anyways, the, yeah. the so the, motorcycles. No, 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 no. I'm totally good. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy talking about this stuff. I, I'm, for me, with the whole Trump aspect of things, I look at this and I go, somebody has a fucking serious like, you know, there is a collect, there's a consorted effort to fucking. I guess the best way to say is like when you ask people about like. Trump v. Biden or Biden v. Trump. So tell me something about fucking, you know, Joe Biden that like, you know, why are you voting for him? I fucking hate. Have you seen Trump? I'm like, yeah, but what does that have to do with fucking Joe Biden? Yeah. Like, okay, I get it. You hate fucking Donald Trump. But the Democratic Party couldn't come up with somebody better than fucking Joe Biden. Uh, you know. I, yeah. Agreed. I just think like, like, so what is it? I, I genuinely believe people tell you when they're going to fuck you. And I think that like that, that this election is somebody saying like, oh. Like, yeah, you know what's crazy about this whole election thing, though, is that everybody, you know, COVID, all the stuff we've been going through in the country, everybody's like, you know what's going to be over after the election. <clears throat> There's no winner of this election. No. It. This shit that we're dealing with, this this division in this country, yes. no matter who wins, is gonna there. It's gonna become more polarizing next year. I'd like to say that, like, you know, Republicans, if they don't win, that they're gonna sit back and and still try to come to the table as like and do their fucking job for the next four years. Right. As we, I would say that Repub or Democrats did not do. They went to the table to try to impeach this guy for the last four years. Yes. And nothing worked. Right. And they did nothing in, in return. You know, they didn't help anything else out, right? Well, they were, but the thing is, is they, for eight years, Barack Obama, and I'm not going to lie, like, I, you know, the first black president in 2008, I was like, I was stoked. Yeah. yeah I was like, man, fucking, we, we're rounding a fucking turn, man. We're yeah. really, we're really changing. And the promises that, the, you know, the, oh, I'm going to de escalate, like, Iraq and Afghanistan and all of these promises were immediately kicked to the curb and fucking Barack Obama straight up sent more motherfuckers to those places. Yeah, it's kind of like a, it's one of those things like you run for the president and then you 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 uh, you become president and then you get to come into this room behind the curtain and go, look, here's what's going on. Yeah. Here's the deal. You ain't doing none of yeah, this shit. Sit down and shut the fuck up. You know There's I mean? a reason why those. And he can't just leave. That's no. top secret. Yeah. Well, yeah. Le uh, if he resigns, he just he looks like a a failed politician. Can He'll you never imagine what a fucking nightmare Donald Trump is? For uh, yeah, I, and I mean like so. Let's say we're here, we're in the briefing room of all the secrets in the secrets. We all put our fucking, you know, okay. So man, whatever we do, don't fucking talk about Montucky cold snack. That motherfucker. The Right out in front of the people. Everybody check out Montucky Cold Snack. I guarantee you <laughs> yeah. that that yeah. dude is like, they're like, we just fucking told this motherfucker not to say anything about this shit. I, I mean, I'm being facetious. Yeah. But he just is literally like, like he just fucking just like, what is that? Uh, like speed, like the speed, just when he's thinking it, it just comes out. Like mm -hmm. it just fucking, yeah. and, it's you know, not like, this measured like. that. That's the thing about it all. It's like, you know, I get that people don't like him, and that's, I mean, that's fine. Not everybody's yeah, supposed right. to like everybody. Right. I wish that we had a president that was doing what he's doing, but without all the, um, the hey, look at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I also look or, at it like. Or we just accept that you don't, I mean, the thing is, is that this is what I've done. I was like, the last three years were good. Yeah. I mean. That we know of. I mean, like, I'm we, saying that my, I thought life was good uh, ever since 08, you know, once, oh, I mean, I didn't, I'm, I'm not true. saying you're, that it was true. like you're anything. You're, you're right. You're I'm right. just saying everything felt good from the moment, you know, like I was too young for the housing crash to affect me financially. Right. Right. So I didn't feel that, but you know, my struggling ass at the time was still struggling the same way I was in 07. So our house, our house was absolutely. So we were, it, it was a subprime Mm. realistically the 
the loan that we were given, we shouldn't have been given. And Obama bailed, that shit bailed out. Like it, it, the problem was there. And so, so it is like, I don't, there, I have no problems. I said, when I was going to this, to, I did a lot of long range shooting from mm -hmm. like 2010 to 2013. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time at a range. And I listened to these dudes and they were like, Obama, man, he's fucking, you know, it's like the worst thing ever. And I'm like, I just, I, you know, yeah. I don't see that shit, dude. Like, I don't, I, for the same reason, I just don't see that the president has. I, I don't feel like it was the president doing anything, and it, whether it was Obama or, or um, Trump. What I feel like that no one seems to want to address is how transparent the world became over the last 10 years right. based on social media and everybody having a camera in their pocket. Right. And I'm not going to say that like police brutality on blacks or whites or whatever the case may be was not worse or better now. Or I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying now that shit's on front street right. every day. Yeah, I, I would think that it was. I would genuinely believe. I think that it's worse. For I sure. think what happened is, is people kicked the shit out of people. I yeah. don't think they killed Dude, them. when you would run from a cop on, on a bike back in the day, like when we you know, were riding sport bikes, it was commonly known here in DFW. Hey, if you run and you get away, kudos to you. If you don't, they're beating your ass with batons. That's yeah, right. how it's going down. Right. And we're like, all right, that's the game we're playing. Yeah. But now there's no way they'll do it now. Like, I mean, they don't even have a chase. Like, you can't chase here or anything now. But back in the day, like... It's just like common knowledge. Like, hey, man, like yeah, you're going to get a you're beat. gambling here, Yeah, you know? Yeah. But I'm not going to say that, like, you know, like going back to what my my wife's dad was saying about, like, there were people in police departments that were absolutely. Yeah, they were racist. They were racist. And it's like one of those. It's like a weird one, because I think of racism in, in a lot of different ways. Right. I think of it like there's that one racism racism we've grown up with when you see like Amistad and fucking Roots and these these movies right. about like. Right. But I don't even know if that's real racism. I think racism is like once they became normal and then people hated them for it. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I would say like then it was just like it was another type of racism where they just completely dehumanized them in a, in a way. But then in the from the moment that the slaves were free to the, you know, the Civil Rights Acts and things like that, that was like real racism. I hate you because you're now free. I hate you because you're well, getting see, this some is, of my But things. this is where we get into. And I did when when. When this shit all fucking, the pandemic shit really was kicking full force, mm -hmm. and then George Floyd, I, I really checked in. Yeah. I really, really checked in, like, and really started hacking away. And I had, uh, I had been for a while, but I really started looking at, like, the mechanism within me. Like, my grandfather was, was incredibly racist. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, at one point I asked my grandma, I was like, man, what's, what's the deal with this? Yeah. And he had worked for LA Water and Power and he was working for LA Water and Power when uh, affirmative action started. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he started seeing people being promoted that he, that he personally didn't feel should be promoted. Yeah. I, after that happened, he ultimately ended up like three or four years. He was a foreman. He ended up retiring mm -hmm. uh, four or five years, five or six years, somewhere around there by like 70, 60, somewhere in, somewhere around that yeah. time, late sixties, very early seventies. My grandfather retired from LA water and power was like, I, I can't like, I'm not, I'm not going to be promoted. So she speculated that that, she said that's when he, he was different because yeah. they weren't outwardly. He wasn't outwardly. There are the people that are outwardly racist. They're like, you, and you know where you stand with those people. Like mm -hmm. if you start talking <clears throat> pro anything other than their agenda, you know that they're like, mm -mm. for me, like, I, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I really kind of blew up that and I, and I understand what it doesn't like we can, when it comes to like black lives matter or, you know, if you put it to a color of a skin, let's say we eradicate that 
mm -hmm. aspect of bigotry in our mind. But bigotry is the key word. Because then I start going, hmm, red cups. I don't like red cut. You have this discriminating mind yeah. that's like, mm, I don't like, like if your body frame is this, whether you're skinny or big, I don't like that. The mechanism is, is it, how about we just like people work on not fucking like that you just accept people. So I'll post an image of a skinnier girl. Mm -hmm. That chick needs a cheeseburger. And you know, the thing is, is they think they're hip. Yeah. They think that they're, that they're like, yeah, I'm going to say this for women. No motherfucker. You understand that like, you just told this woman that she's fucking like, she needs to do what you think she needs to do. Yeah. How about you just shut the fuck up and you don't have to like it. Mm -hmm. But you can like, she may be too skinny for your likings. We all have shit that we like. I don't have to tell you, like, you know, I don't, hey man, you probably shouldn't have used silver there. What? <laughs> the fuck? Like, you know, I made a creative, anytime anybody in my creative life, anytime somebody has said like, oh man, you know, this would have been better if you'd have done that. I literally like just say, oh yeah, that's the cool thing is, is you can do it. Like, <laughs> Make your own. Like, I, right. I'm going to do mine the way I do want to do me. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this or I'm going to photograph the way I want. And the cool thing is, is buy a camera and shoot this girl the way you want to shoot her. Yeah, if you exactly. don't like the way I did it. Like, yeah, there's just so many things that, um, like I said, I try not to get into these things. I, you know, my kids are, are mixed. So it's like, I find myself in conversations with my daughter who's, you know, 18 going on 19 mm -hmm. right now who is mixed and going to school with it's poignant. Yeah. And it's like, she's looking at, she's being forced to be aware of racism that maybe she never really dealt with growing up because of her accepting sides of the family, right. both sides. Right. Um, and now she's in, you know, in college now where, you know, I was hanging out with her yesterday and she's like, you know, our coach, he's racist. I'm like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you know, the white kids in school, like he doesn't give them the same shit that he gives the black kids. So there's like automatically, whether it's true or not. Right. In her beginning adulthood, she's getting indoctrinated with this separatism or segregation between kids of color and her. And I, I don't want her to get to the point where she feels like that's always going to be her crutch as to why she didn't get the Did opportunity. You, do you talk to her about yeah, it? Yeah, I try to in a way that's... Uh, mm -hmm. It's really hard to talk to kids because you don't want to talk to them in a way that everything they say is dumb, no, <laughs> you know, right. but like I have a good, I'm pretty good at that. Like you're being a dumbass right now. Here's the deal. So I'm having to learn how to talk more, um, be more reserved with just throwing this shit out that, that comes out of my mouth. I'm having to be a little bit more like, all right, let me see if I say this. Maybe she's going to think this. Where could this go in five years? You know what right. I mean? When you're telling a... Well, I think... You know what I think? I think that, like, when we have these conversations, any conversations, that we just speak honestly. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that you can... The caveat is, is that I may be wrong. Oh, yeah. 100%. You know, you just... It's like fucking... You're her dad. Like, you have experience. I think that, like, we have experience. And it, that experience means something. Yeah. It just sucks because, like I said, it's one of those things that I don't... You know, of course, I didn't grow up black, so I don't know what that's like. You know what I mean? As far as like feeling discriminated against and whatnot, whatnot. The closest I could ever say that, and this is unfair to say, but is being tattooed. Right. You know, looking a little not like normal. Right. right. So, you know, that's the only thing is like you kind of I, I've gone into restaurants and fast food and felt like I was less successful or less this than in, in certain people's yeah. eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but still can, you know, that's still small fries compared to what, you know, that whole race has to deal with. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, but it, it just sucks because none of us, we're all, we're, we're, I think we're all as humans just struggling, trying to make it right now. Right. Whether it's financially, mentally, or just, you know, any, any Tali at the end of it, you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're all trying to fucking just figure it out. And so when one, one category or, or one race or one identification of people come out and, and, and want more or less the cheat codes to life. We're all like, yo man, like I'm having a hard time too, regardless. But this is the thing. That's it. Is that we're all struggling. Yeah. Everybody's struggling. 
Every fucking buddy is struggling. Yeah. Even the guy that's sitting on fucking on a, on his own beach in fucking Fiji, he's struggling with something. Yeah. Garen fucking T. I think my wife's fucking the pool, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I gave her a fucking island. <laughs> So yeah, that, that, that's the only thing is that like I, I feel like it sucks, man. It, it 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 that's the part that sucks is that like, you know, for a while, which I didn't get into this very much, but when they were talking about like white male cisgendered, you know, elitist, like we weren't allowed to be anything. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't I, I say we like I I like I dealt with that shit. I'm a fucking custom painter in a bike shop. Right. I'm small fries in this world. Right. So I'm not dealing with corporate shit like a lot of people have to do. I've heard some shit from like Harley corporate recently from my friend that was working there and does not work there anymore. That's like, wow, dude, I never grew up in a corporate setting. I don't know what it's like to uh, I don't know what it's like to work around females. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know when I worked at Walmart around females, we just fucked them. Right. Literally, that was like the workplace fucking was a thing that everybody did. Like just like <laughs> just like every waiter and waitress, like yeah. Chili's, Applebee's, they're all fucking each other. Dude, we all banged. It was like the break room was like going to the club, dude. <laughs> I, I, I've never understood. I've never yeah. understood like why, like why we can't have conversations about like sexuality. It's like yeah. oh, it's taboo. Like. No, motherfucker, like it should be shit that people fucking openly talk about because yeah. it's we do it. We make I've always said the final frontier is sexuality, mm -hmm. like really fucking getting in because people like some trippy ass shit, man. <laughs> and what? Like, you know, why is that? Like, yeah. why is that? Why do well, people? Jesse could probably I don't know, we're just that. into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jesse, Jesse grew up with uh, with porn on the phone, right? And, you know, I grew up with, like, a DVD. Or not even DVD, like a VHS that you had to right. rewind to your, your favorite yeah, spot. Fuck yeah, yeah. Um, And then I don't know what you grew up with. Hit but zero. Yeah, and VHS. Hit zero. It was fucking and weird, fucking though. Like, 386, like, the scene. With, with porn, though, it's <clears> kind of <throat> like a drug in the fact that, like, if you get it when you're younger and you just start watching normal porn, you're like, oh, this is tight. This is tight. You know, and then as you get older, it's like that normal shit gets boring. Yeah. You know, so then you start finding like new weird shit. And the next thing you know, it's like you're watching all this fucked up, nasty shit. And you're like, why am I into this? But then in real life, you know, it doesn't it doesn't equate into that. It's like <laughs> in real life, it's like you're still into like having some like fucking vanilla ass sex and doing basic shit, you know? Well, yeah, you may not have ac access to it. But it's not even that. It's like you're you, the porn is like separate from actual real sex, you know, in a, in a sense where it's like you watch porn, but you want to watch more fucked up shit because it's like now you're watching porn. And it's like in a different domain in your brain. Yeah. As opposed to like with normal sex, like, dude, I just, I'm happy with it. You just blow on it. I'm good. Like, I don't, right. you just touch it. Right. You know, I'm fine. But it's like with, with me, at least with watching porn, it got to a point where I was like, all right, man, I'm just. So it's really, yeah, it, that, that's this interesting. This fucked up shit. And I, I don't, I don't, I'm not <clears throat> into this in real life, but right. with porn, I'm like, that's hot. You know? See, the thing for me, like porn has to be like when I, the shit that I watch that actually arouses me, it has to be a scenario that could actually happen. So something that's like believable. Or yes, like it that. has yeah, to be yeah. believable for me to even fucking like to, to actually like uh, engage it. Right. I, if, it, if it couldn't happen in real life, I'm like, this has never and happened. In that's real life. Like, that's where it starts for. Like a lot, a lot of people in my generation, especially, you know, like we yeah, all, yeah. we grew up with that shit. We got exposed way too early. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like 12 years old fucking watching some fucked up shit, you know, but it's like, uh, it starts there and then it just grows because you get bored of it. Did you play video games? Oh, fuck yeah. I played okay. See, see, I think that, I think that everything this, has a natural progression. I think that this, this probably has to do with like violence in like the fucked up shit that can like video games. Admittedly, video games for me like started with fucking asteroids and Kong and shit. <laughs> yeah, like, burr, 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 burr. yeah, yeah. You're Simple not tats. like, yeah, you're not like fucking kicking in a door and fucking annihilating fucking grandma and and fucking hookers. And yeah, shit or like you're that. playing Grand Theft Auto, picking up That's a hooker, right. fucking her, and then killing her for your money back. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't. So I think that that is probably. I'm sure it has a, has some kind of you know psychological effects or nuances on on people you know especially my generation. It's just so weird to like 
when you really think about it, how how it just almost equates to its own type of sexuality, yeah. you know. And there's and there's people that are like, I can't get off unless I watch porn now, you know. Thank God I'm not one of those people. That sounds fucking Dude, miserable. I got a funny. So have you ever watched Norsemen on on Netflix? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's making fun of that Viking show, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a, a Viking spoof. And I've only seen a couple episodes, but this was a funny ass, but very thought out scene. Yeah. So, you know, they're known for going raiding and stuff like that. So this dude, one of the raiders is like, comes back. He's like, you know, I really just want to settle down and be in a relationship. (laughs) So he's like, (laughs) he's like trying to have sex with his, his now wife. But it just doesn't work for him. So he's like got to have a scene of like people looking like they're dead and he's raping her because that's how he's <laughs> yeah, used yeah, right. to getting off. It's exactly. basically, yeah. you know, and there was another funny part of that because in this in this show, there's like one main chick that's a character, but she's also part of the raiding party. So the dudes are all like, yeah, it was crazy. She was just taking all these dicks to the face. <laughs> and she has a necklace of penises around. <laughs> it's like. You, you know, like, thinking about our, like, shit nowadays, and you put it towards, like, some culture from, you know, thousands yeah, of years right. ago, it's like, yeah, I don't know how that would work out, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's the evolutionary thing. That, you know what's weird, though? Like, all this, like, stepbrother, stepsister shit. That is a very popular thing right now. I don't even know no if it's reason. popular. It's like, it's just a title. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's like, oh, this well, is what I'm into. It's because you can't say... You can't say fucking like mother son. You have to say mother. You're talking about in porn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like the like you can't really talk about like fucking. Well, you see that shit still though. You see you see mom fuck son. Yeah, yeah. but mom and daughter. But fuck the PC stepson. way of yeah. seeing the PC way of doing that is stepson, stepson, right. or stepbrother, or step. Well, so this is my only concern, right? Is is that you know going to be you know for for someone like me like I fucking know I I get it like yeah that's definitely not his mom you know what I mean <laughs> I'm not right. looking into it but that like deep like a ten year old but somebody that just starts jerking off at 10, 11, 12 they know years that. old I think they inherently know I that. do but at the same time what if they do get a hot stepsister and he's used to jerking off to that next thing you know he's he's doing some well, that shit clearly happens dude I like, know it does <laughs> but that's the problem that's like, why that fantasy is no- there is because more normal yeah. that, that fantasy is there because it's already been there well you know the reality you know? Is, is if you break it down scientifically as long as you don't fucking have kids like there the actual act of having sex is just having sex now if you want to start a family somebody's going to start playing the banjo along the way <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're fucking. That's you're fucking up the gene pool there. Yeah, like you yeah. can't have like fucking, yeah. which is the whole crazy thing about like inbred, uh-huh. like uh, purebred dogs. Like they're all. Someone fucking, said uh, we need to talk about OnlyFans. And how do you feel about that shit? Uh, I, can I? I need. Go, to, can dude, I go to the go, restroom? Yeah, yeah. Go to the restroom, man. Right. Go for it. <laughs> I absolutely want to talk about that. <laughs> no, I was, I was telling. Uh, I was telling him. I was like, man. It's kind of weird how, like, growing up watching porn, because I was exposed to it a lot younger than, like, you guys were, you know? Yeah. Like, like like computer porn videos and shit, mm-hmm. um, and having such a wide selection. It's almost like it's its, a, it's, its own, like, sexuality. So it's like, when, when I started watching porn, it was, like, normal basic shit, you know, like vanilla sex, and you're just like, look, you're like, oh, dude, tits, or that vagina's fucking hot, like, that yeah. pussy's nice, you know, but then it grows into, like, you try to watch those things now, and you're like, this is fucking boring, and then you're like, what happens when they get strangled, or what happens, you know, yeah. and then you get into this fucked off shit, and now you're like, you're, and the next thing you know, it's like, you know, 10 a.m., and you gotta go do something, but you're like, what if... There's a tranny fucking a chick with a, and then this chick's got a, you know, and then it's like all this fucking fucked up shit. But then when it comes to real life, you're like, it it doesn't equate that way. You're like, you still get off to vanilla sex, Mm -hmm. you know, you still enjoy it a hundred percent. And it's like, it almost becomes its own thing. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I guess. But for some people that doesn't happen. It's for some people that like crosses over, and then that's how. And then that you get those fucking weirdos, like the the real nasty people, the people who start like really taking this shit seriously, like you know. And then they become rapists, or they become. Dead. Yeah, well, I feel like that's. Can you turn the AC up just a little bit? It's it's fucking freezing out there. It's like kind of warm in here, but out there, freezing. Uh. But no, like yeah, it's up to like seventy-seven. 
Um, so what was real funny um, to me was it's like the OnlyFans, right? Yeah. So, like, say there's a chick I follow and I'm like, I'm attracted to her. You mm-hmm. know, not – like, I'm not attracted to any chick where I, I, I sexually want to be with them versus my wife. Like, I'm truly – happy that way yeah but like oh she's hot i wonder what her boobs look like so that's that's, that's the, the man draw to yeah. only fans well i haven't i've never done it i've never gone on to anybody i've never things, subscribed to an but OnlyFans. like the concept like there was this fun i started following this like dallas texas uh videos <clears throat> or something that's mm-hmm. all like and there's this chick he, they posted a picture of, of their car and this chick had her HTTP address her only on the back fans for her only address. fans written in like shoe polish on the back window, and then like naturally I went there to see if it was real. And Shit it's, worked. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it <laughs> fucking marketing, worked. dude. Yeah. But you know, like Joe Rogan has always said this too on his podcast. Like, sex is like the oldest thing that you can sell, right? Yeah. yeah. So how how is it? It's not very much different for them to go do that as it was for the chicks that were in these old uh, railroad towns trying to, you know, sell Hustle up their yeah. some money with their pussy. I mean, they're they're not necessarily. I, I don't think all of them are. I don't think they're fucking on there or anything. I don't think it's like OnlyFans. There's they, some there's some fucking like depends. chicks on there just taking you dick. You can do. Dude. Well, the thing is, is this. It can be whatever <clears throat> you want it to be. I had. It wasn't until recently that I looked. I. That the name OnlyFans came up, I saw a link, clicked on it, and I was like, oh, fuck. But see, my take on this is, is this fucking gold? Yeah. Like, it's fucking awesome that, like, you know, if you choose to do this, you can make money. And it's fucking immediate. So, I have, I've actually, I've started looking into OnlyFans because I like the idea of creating content. The, so Patreon can do that for t- for photography for, for, for <laughs> Patreon is the same thing for photographers. See, I so, didn't, I've never looked into Patreon. So like I used to follow a, uh, a, a an artist, a Christian Saint photography, which he used to do a lot of like the suicide girls right. types shoots and stuff like that. And so, sorry, Disgusting. there you go. Um, <laughs> I started following him for a while, but then I got to the point. I was like, you know what? I'm only waiting. I only I'm only doing this to see this girl's tits. Right. You know, like I'm not really looking at this dude's photography, so I stopped doing it, right? Because I didn't want that kind of uh it, I wasn't looking at it for any other than a sexual reason, right? Right. So, but that's what he did on there. Now, OnlyFans feels like it, it like I get it from your point, like you could sell your the kind of more erotic photography that you're you're doing and someone can see it and Well, someone would be able to see the uncensored. But but I'm also interested in looking at creating more erotic images Mm -hmm. you know there's a so when i shoot somebody there's a lot of outtakes yeah there's just a lot of stuff that i don't use Mm -hmm. i wouldn't unknowingly i'm not going to you know uh, right now i've you know i've I've, i'm like ah unless i told someone i was shooting this specifically for or that i may use it for only fans i wouldn't use it mm-hmm. but i have images where you know somebody's legs up and their shorts are kicked to the side and half of their fucking stuff is hanging out i have that shit mm-hmm. like i could put that on there I, mean, I know that that's the stuff really that people want to see but i didn't make that i didn't make that uh, that wasn't something Technically, the images are mine, mm-hmm. but I, I, you know, to me, there's a moral ambiguity yeah, to like yeah. presenting somebody like they're like, "Hey, man, I didn't necessarily want like." Yeah, exactly. So that's what, what I would wonder is, um, <clears throat> so two things I would actually wonder about what you do and like these new platforms for women and men actually to sell themselves this way, and I don't mean for that to no, sound I do, bad. I do. I know. Um, the, but like, a have you been reached out to help f- photograph content for people and those type of things? Well, I haven't, but I've been hitting people up and saying like, "Hey, you know, I see that you have an OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, I'd like to start shooting. I'd like to pre- start working on content for this, not f- just for me, but I'd like, you know, if you're interested or you're okay with that." Yeah, I think the thing is, is that a lot of chicks they're. I'm not looking at the, like, a lot of this is selfie shit. Like, this, a lot of this is done with a phone. Yeah. 
a lot of these videos or the, the only fans that I've seen, like the images aren't, I wouldn't say professional. They're yeah. not like, uh, the quality isn't yeah, super it's not good. Like and I'm, I'm looking for something very, I'm looking to do something very stylized. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I mean, I have my own ideas, which I won't necessarily go into now, but I, I am actively looking for people. So yeah, it's kind of a weird one, man, because like we joke about it. That's why someone brought it up on theirs because we've actually made it was fucking Cuddy. Who said oh, it that. was. Yeah, we've actually talked a lot about that um, jokingly about like different. It, it's a very new thing for our society. Yeah. Right. Because we're used to that more taboo ass uh, aspect of like the strip club, which then you give her a dollar and she makes 40 of them, you know, in a dance or 100 of them in a dance or whatever. Right. But I mean, if you think about it, man, like, and you, and we go back to what we were talking about originally in this conversation, how sex sells all of a sudden this one chick, right. You know, which is funny to me because it's not just like those big voluptuous, like fake tits, you know, toned asses, chicks that have only fans. There's it's somebody, like, there's one, there's there is somebody that works for everybody. At fucking Walgreens or some shit. You know what I mean? Just, yes. <clears throat> it's like they're making more money off this <clears throat> than actual her job. That's also it's, like a side that sells though. Yeah. See, the thing is that the, the, this is the beauty of this. It's more natural. It's more like honest. Yeah. Well, it, and it, it allows you realize that there's somebody, there's somebody for everybody. Like there is someone for everyone. Right. Like there's like people that you wouldn't, you know, it's not my style, but some dude is stoked to see the person you're talking about. So like, this is what I would actually this is probably deeper than I think that any of us know how to get into. Cause I don't, but I'm gonna throw it out yeah, there. Yeah, I only go six inches, dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of society does that end up creating in like retrospect from that taking place? I mean, you gotta think I, a lot of our society now is based off our grandfather and how his world was and how he shaped the world. For I think, us. I think if you look at this and this is, I think that we have skirted around this, most of this conversation, I think one, I think it's a better, I think that it's empowering. Mm -hmm. And I think that it allows, let's say you're 25 years old. It allows you to make all of your money minus the money that only fans takes or mm -hmm. Patreon takes or whoever, whoever you're. So uh, when you get to the morality aspect of it, it's all bullshit. Like, like everybody, we have been sexual deviants forever. Mm -hmm. As when we're, I think we're one of the only animals that has sex for non, like we have I sex. Dolphins do too. Yeah. yeah Mam yeah, I guess mammals you. too. Yeah. There, I know we're not the only one, but we're, we're very, there are very few animals yeah. or mammals that have sex for enjoyment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the sooner that we just, just as it is with looking at other cultures, looking at people with uh, other skin colors, uh, body types, the sooner that we look at this and really just try to kick down the walls of like well, what we accept and what we don't accept. We don't, the thing is this, is that like if somebody takes off their, well, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, the, the last time we had a deep conversation about this on the, on the podcast was with uh, my buddies down in Houston, the Hellbent guys. Right. And we were just making a complete debacle of it, like joking, <laughs> talking shit, you know, all kinds of funny things. And there's a couple of good points that I would bring up here. And it's this is a self thing. Right. So if we're in that kind of space, I meet you at a bar, we hit it off, and then later on I find out that you have an OnlyFans page. Right. Everything else about our interaction has been honest. And it's not that OnlyFans is not honest, but that immediately puts a stain on... For you. for Exactly, for me, not them. That's why I was saying this is a self thing. It's a self barrier we put up to where, like, you know what? If my wife was in Playboy, I would be stoked. Be like, yeah, man, fucking dating a playboy bunny you know what i mean like i i'm i had a you know that's for some weird reason in our society well but it's put up into some kind of pedestal like yeah man i got a fucking playboy centerfold old lady the thing is is that somebody along the way 
legitimized Playboy, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then Penthouse. <clears throat> and as you move down the chain, yeah, like it's less legitimized, but it doesn't change the what it is. So, so my thing is, is the job would be for you to fucking get over it, like to yeah. really work on ex just accepting, like, yeah, I mean. We have the choice. Like you say like, oh, well, this is a problem for me. It's I think that you can have a conversation with someone and they're like, hey, fucking OnlyFans is my life, dude. It's how I pay the rent. And you're like, I'm out. Or, you know, we really just you, start looking at. You, instead of selfies, <clears throat> now you're holding the camera. <laughs> like, I need some new Jordans. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the thing is, is that like. That's how I felt when I, I used to date this chick uh, that had a premium snap. Right, and that was before OnlyFans and shit came out. But right. th th they would pay to see like you know nude photos or right. videos and shit on Snapchat. And when I originally went into it, I was much younger. I was still a little insecure, but over time I got used to it. And then I was like, okay, I'm getting you know she's buying me dinner on these dudes' dimes and shit. And it's like at a point still, it's like I personally would not want to be in that position because I've been there and it just kind of puts strain that is not necessary like for one the chick now has too many options and and you know it, it kind of it, it's empowering to her yeah but dude you have to you this is the thing there's like, too many distractions <clears throat> and so and then two for me being who i am it's like i'm still like a little traditional where it's like man this is my chick and i don't i don't want everybody to sexualize her the way I do. It's kind of like a selfish thing, you know? Yeah. The thing is, is that when your girl walks into the, walks into the public space, mm -hmm. someone is sexualizing her. Of course. If of she's course. got a short skirt on, some dude's thinking about seeing under her skirt. I think it's just the fact that it's blatantly right there and it's obvious. I, I totally understand the mechanism. And for, I think that's why a lot of like men in general have an issue with women empowering themselves that way. You know, and that's why a lot of them try to try to put their own insecurities on these women and be like, you can't do that. You're a slut. Da, da, da. <clears throat> They're not a slut. You're just insecure with it. Well, and either you have to accept that and, and, and be like, OK, I can deal with this or you accept it or or you walk away. You know, and for me, I've just chose I've chosen to walk away. Right, that's, not not of, of you know, that's not the well, type of, you know, that's not the type of woman I look for. Like, well, if we go to look at this, attention is different for everybody. So, like, you you know, like having 40,000 followers, having 400,000 followers, I don't know how I could handle that kind of attention. So you do the same, you would do the same. Yeah, thing. you are. But you, you say that. But when all of a sudden the world looks at you for like, hey, man, all like you have this fucking you walk out on stage and there's this audience like it. The, I want to be the same dude, and you kind you try to be, but that that fucking you absorb that. You know what I mean? You yeah. change a little I, bit. I, I don't I, say you change, but it it it, it fucks it can, with you. It can it, it can. But the, all of this, go, I will continually go back to the same thing. Like this is our inner work. This is our work to, like, I, I don't. I, I kind of like there isn't much that you can say that would surprise me. Yeah. And I try to be accepting of like, oh, hey, I do this. Cool. Like, yeah. I mean, if all I really care about is like. I, I, as I a man, like growing up, like you're, you're, you know, at your age now. So did you feel like you went through certain phases of maybe dealing with like an insecure Tim phase where you had to get confident enough to with yourself? Well, to, listen, I'll say this. I, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not a first move guy. I'm typically I'm not a drunk. Yeah. I would be a first move guy. <laughs> yeah. Sober, I'm not a first move guy. I'm I have a huge fear of rejection. Yeah. You know, so I don't like I'm not outwardly like uh You know, if I get to know somebody, yes. But I'm not real like, you know, I, it, it kind of I guess like in talking I remember somebody Somebody's stories, they were all like, and then they made a comment about like, enough with the dick pics. So I messaged the person, I was like, do fucking random people just send you dick pics? Mm -hmm. She's like, oh God, you have no oh, idea. Yeah. So then I actually started asking people like, hey, do you get random dick pics? Oh yeah. yeah that's I have people who want to buy my fucking panties. I have people who, and I just think like, that's not surprising to me. I understand 
what like this over sexualization. So I don't, I, I, I guess my point in bringing this up is, is that like, you know, if you're with somebody that, and this is what people are doing, I don't like your girlfriend, like whoever it is, they're choosing to be with you. Yeah. And, yeah. and they can, whatever job they have, they can fall in love with someone at that job just as easy as mm -hmm. they could, right. you know? Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I've always felt like I don't really have any control. All I can do is be the best me and, <clears throat> and not try to drive somebody into someone else's arms, but I don't really have any control over that. Right. You just want True, to provide yeah. the best, you know, you don't want to well, give them any reason to leave. I, I mean, I, I want to be, I want to be happy and fulfilled. Right. Like I don't, you know, the thing is, is that like, we'd like to think that we have control over what other people do and we don't like yeah. we just, and, and we shouldn't, it's my belief that we shouldn't work to control what other people do right. in any, this goes to racism, to, to bigotry, right. discrimination, to all of those things. Like if we don't like white people don't need to be out marching for black people. They just need to get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Verbal support from way back there. Hey, yes. you guys are, yeah, we're with there you. isn't even, it isn't even verbal support. Just get out of my, quit suppressing me. Right. Just, I, I yeah. all cultures are like this. Dude, I, when, I don't know if when you were in Sturgis, we went through, uh, the Pine Ridge Indian reservation. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've, I've been on reservations before. I, I've never fucking seen anything like that in my entire life. Nothing. What so, <clears throat> you know, where's Pine Ridge at? Pine Ridge is, is south of like, so you have Custer. So Custer is up Rapid City, Sturgis. It, yeah. yeah. So it's down Badlands. It's kind of west so, and yeah, south no. of the Badlands. Okay, I've, I've been to that, yeah. So it's like... It's, I went to there last year. Pine Ridge and Rosebud, like those those mm -hmm. reservations. When you look into like... Like, that's... I, I posted with the Russell Means talking, addressing like the Senate, I think. And I, and, and I don't have the st statistics in front of me, but like most people's level of poverty like, you know, lower income mm -hmm. in poverty, like it moves with the gross national product. Mm -hmm. Native Americans have stayed suppressed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move with gross national product. It stays fucking constant. So, you know, I don't know, man. I, I, I have, I've, and I've always had really strong feelings about, you know, about what we have in this country, the ability we have in this country. N not everybody, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, there, it's definitely a, it's a, it's really tough to like, what do you want to get behind the, the oppression of this race or the oppression, uh, well, oppression but, of this race? But, and seeing that was the, the ultimate thing is, is that we just look at like, if we just let people, I, 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 I've said the same thing about women, like the suppression is the act of like we have a tendency as human beings to do this when something threatens us. Mm -hmm. Like when you listen to somebody like, Oh, I was bullied, you know, I have pretty unconventional and not necessarily popular views on, on bullying. Like mm -hmm. I'm not for bullying, but there is a bully that nobody ever wants to really ever talk. You, you can't get rid of bullying. Yeah. Because what happens is, is people then are ill-equipped to deal with the fucking adversity they face in life. Like, how you deal with the bully is how you deal with fucking adversity in life. If it fucking makes you... How many people have been told they can't do something by some fucking asshole to come back with something greater and better? Like, yeah. somebody's like... You, you need the friction. You motherfucker, you can't do this. And you're like... Oh, this fucking guy, like, shut the fuck up, man. Right. And so you go home and you make this thing and you show up and you're like, check this shit out now. And people are like, 
I just think that like you have to have that resistance. Like it mm-hmm. isn't <clears throat> people who are who are trying to make a resistance free culture for us. That it's is not gonna a, make, yeah, it's it just makes everybody only, soft. Well, it's a huge disservice. Like how do you ask Nick how he fucking sharpens a blade? Like how there are so many fucking analogies. Yeah. Like yeah. how do you forge fucking steel? Yeah. How's a diamond made? These are all violent fucking processes that make that have beautiful fucking results. Like, yeah, it's one of those deals, man. Like we're we're in a very we're in a in a very strange time where it's very easy, but it's it's hard. You well, because nothing has changed. People are talking yeah. about it like, you know, people want to talk about like, oh, it's so much easier now. No, it's the same. It's yeah. new. Stress is stress. And this There's is new I was obstacles. Gonna, yes. You know, the thing, nothing changes. Like it just changes because of, it's like the, the comment, like men need to get out of the way and let women do it. Give it their try. It'd be the same problem because the problem isn't a man or a woman. The problem is power. Power yeah. corrupts. So like n- the shit doesn't change. Like it, it literally, or it changes its face, but it doesn't change its nature. Mm-hmm. Like its qualities and characteristics are exactly the fucking same. So it's not any easier now than it was. In fact, it, it may be, you could make a case that it's more difficult because like my grandfather ate biscuits and gravy, bacon and eggs. He ate that shit and he died at 92. <clears throat> and someone could make a case that like, you know, chickens weren't fed health, health gro- or growth hormones yeah. and all of that shit. Like yeah. things have changed. So, but I, I, I think that the real change is that my grandfather didn't stress about that shit. He didn't worry about what he was fucking eating. He just ate it and assumed, I think that like when, like when people start eating healthier, whatever that may be, let's say all you ate was cheese whiz and fucking Ritz crackers. That's mm-hmm. all you Sounds ate. Sounds good as fuck right now. <laughs> <laughs> a little cheese whiz. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, long story longer. I just, I think that like the stress around shit is worse than the actual act of whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, like that's, the, the that's, stress of not drinking versus just have a drink and just. Do yeah, it. right. It's like a, every morning I'm like, like, why do I keep doing that? Or every day, like, why am I drinking? I don't want to do this anymore, but I'm doing it. Right. You know, but. You just have to surrender and fucking not worry about it. That is literally the algorithm to everything in life. You stress about getting sick so much you make yourself sick. Of course. You know, you stress about, man, I hope, like, bike trips. I'm so worried about my bike breaking down so you don't go, you know. But in reality, if you would have went... It would even if you did break down. It's not as bad as what you thought it was going to be. It's, it's your your brain always is a, is much more capable of making these situations way harsher than they would be when they actually happen. Well, dude, and even if it's fucking, we all know this. Even if it's hard, mm-hmm. even if it's difficult, we <clears throat> we have the freedom <clears throat> to choose how we. Tibetans will say like, you learn about freedom in a prison cell. Yeah, true. Yeah. So you, like, you have your fucking, like, you can look at it in a way that it's not a problem. You know, you look at people that are along for the ride. Right. They don't give a shit. Like, they break down. They're still, like, it's still a, fu- it's all a party. Yeah. It's just a party. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that, we all have that choice. Like, you know, oh, this is fucking pure hell, man. The wind's blowing. The fucking, it's raining or whatever. It's all Meanwhile, there's somebody who's like, isn't it fucking awesome? Yeah. yeah that should, that, that's the it's, thing is it, the diversity of perspective. Yeah. Like, it's a hundred percent perspective. Life yeah. is literally what you make it in your own head, man. Yep. And you know, you, I've tried to explain that to people before and they just like, some people get it and some people just go straight over their brains. Like they just can't comprehend the fact that like, if you just change the way you looked at what happened to you, then your life would change. Well, dude, I had, so I had this conversation with my dad. I was like, one person can change the world. My dad's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, one person can change the world. We went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he was like, all right, how does one person change the world? And, you know, I think he's thinking like, you know, I'm, I said, it's a magic trick. Yeah. Yeah. I said, they change their perspective. Mm -hmm. 
And the world is fucking literally different. Oh man, that doesn't change the world. That changes the person's perspective. I said, first of all, it changes the world as it pertains to that person. And because of that, the byproduct is that, the byproduct of that is, is that they don't go out and they don't fucking beat people up because they like to butt fuck. They don't go out and beat people up because of the color of their skin. They just start fucking accepting things and they have, they, they create less resistance to fucking genuine freedom. Like people right. have the fucking, I don't need to dictate to anybody what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. All I can control is the way I react to whatever the fuck it is. And we have, like, we like to pretend like we have control. We have no fucking control. I mean, it's the same thought process as, like, you know, you get into an argument with somebody and then you hold on to it all day and then you're like, I had a shitty fucking day because that motherfucker. No. You, you, it's you. Yes. If you would have gotten it's to that argument. Us. Yeah, if you would have gotten to that argument and then let it go 30 seconds later, you'd have been, a, <laughs> your day would have been fine. You well, ruined it for yourself. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And nobody wants to take responsibility or hold themselves accountable for that thought. That, this is, this is the, <clears throat> the fucking like ominous black orb mm -hmm. that surrounds mankind right now is that nobody, it's definitely our problem in this fucking country is nobody wants to take responsibility, first of all, and then accountability for their fucking actions. Yeah. Be responsible and hold yourself accountable. Okay, so you fucked this dude last night and you do you wish you hadn't have done it. Move the fuck on. Mm -hmm. You weren't fucking raped. Nobody coerced you into any fucking thing. You fucking you fucked somebody you didn't want to fuck. Right. I've made you that thought mistake. You wanted to fuck them. I made that mistake. Well, even once in my life. even though like we all everybody fucking has. Yeah. Like everybody has made that fucking mistake. And you know the thing is, is that like you're like, oh, it was a mistake. I'm just not gonna fucking try not to make that mistake again. Right. But I can't go out and fucking hold people accountable for fucking my mistakes. Right. Like that's that to me is our is the problem now. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be eating a Snickers bar. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, yeah. don't eat a Snickers bar if you don't want to. All of this shit, when you look at masks and <clears throat> those fucking, those surgical masks on the side of them, minus the N95 or whatever, they'll say, like, this does not prohibit the fucking, like, this isn't your wonder, like, you know, you're not going to not get COVID. When you see somebody with a mask and they're finger fucking their face, yeah. where they're touching every fucking thing and they've got a mask on. Guess what? You're not safe, dude. Like mm -hmm. you're just yeah. fucking. I, I, I've never seen a period in time where we're looking for this like guarantee that we're gonna be okay. That's so irresponsible of you. Yeah, what? that's that's because there's no fucking guarantees. We're we're a we're a we're a, a society based on consumerism. So we're everything about our life is a guarantee, a warranty. Uh, accountability, all these things. Right. Who can I bitch out because this didn't? Who you know? Who's who's responsible for me getting sick? Those litigious. You know I mean? The first time people, when people started suing companies, like, oh, uh, this was a this was a thing at some point, seventies, eighties. Someone burned their mouth on fucking coffee from McDonald's and sued them. And what? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe that. There's a so lot once, of once the, once people start doing that, once the precedent is set that you can sue somebody for fucking and instantly like, become rich for for lack of a better term. Yeah, it it turns it opportunists. You know that's why they call that. You know certain lawyers are ambulance chasers. You know what I mean? That's why that term is there because. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> bad bad <yeah>. podcast. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> etiquette, dude. All these things like change our society, and now you know that's what I was kind of getting at with the OnlyFans. Is like, how is that going to change us as a as a as a race of people, like a human race? I don't think it, it might not change us like the way that has, like as far as like what we're saying the uh, the suing people for whatever reason right. on the table. Right. You know what I mean? Because you could argue that that suing has made people more make products better. In a sense, or not, because I mean, fuck, dude, we had a 1948 fridge here that was working fine forever, you know, since 1948, right? right. And then you go get a fucking brand new fringe for three thousand dollars, and That's two years later, 
it's old technology and doesn't work anymore. Well, I, mean, it, I think it's why, in general, people want old shit. I mean, I think that there's lemmings who want old shit because the cool kids have old shit. Yeah. And then I think that there are people who want old shit for real reasons, that it was built <clears throat> by hardworking people and it works. Yeah, but the world, the world can't work. Like, I know the argument for, like, why aren't cars made of steel anymore? Why aren't fridges made like this oh, of yeah, steel? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that if I make, if I'm a corporation employing 500 or 5,000 people and we make a product so good that you never have to come back for another 10 or 15 years. Right. We don't have a company. Right. Like, I mean, not to but mention. But they were. But the thing is, is Frigidaire or Kenmore or any of those companies that have been around forever, they do. They did, but the the, the main I difference you. I understand is, what you're saying. is like they also didn't have all the the financial regulations, yeah, the yeah. competitors, right. the financial things they had to deal with, uh, the 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 benefits they had to provide for their employees, the the regulations they had to go through to open a storefront or have a you know manufacturing facility. Like there's so many things that come into play where it's forced. <clears throat> us to have to have a new iPhone every year instead of like, hey, dude, build a good iPhone that's going to last for five years. This is a $1,000 phone. The fact of the matter is, is they do. Like, they last. I've Every iPhone I've had, I've had them until I, until I want the new technology. Yeah. But... I mean, you also have to take into account, like, the fact that a lot of the... Uh, it takes more time to build shit properly that'll last. And... Right. The, and, and that equates to more expensive and that equates to paying their employees more for longer hours and, and longer shit. And I don't, the, I, the I, materials themselves probably cost more for like, you know, more sturdy shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all of it kind of just, you, you're boiling all the shit down to like how, what, what can we put out that's passable and that makes us the most amount of money, the cheapest to make. And you know, it it's it it'll last for three years, so it seems like it's working. But then it goes out, and they have to come buy another one. You I don't. I, mean? I, I think that my, my my take on that is is that we should be doing every single thing. I think that like everything that we do, we should. If it's, <clears throat> I say this all the time to myself. <laughs> 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 if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just really that fucking simple. Like if it if. It's an ill-conceived design. It's an ill-conceived design. Mm -hmm. If it's implemented improperly, you know, I'm not trying to like sugarcoat shit. Like it isn't. I'm not trying to tell myself that things aren't what they are. And if they're ill-conceived and they're done poorly, I can make excuses for that. Mm -hmm. You know, and say like, "Oh yeah, that's fucking." I can you know run out the hors d'oeuvres of like, yes, these are all the reasons why what I make is total bullshit, but you need it. Yeah. Come on, man. Just fucking make something like, you well, know. Well, that's why like our culture now has, has had, had, had a place for uh, creators, whether like guys like Knives Made, made My Nick or right. all these people, these these craftsmen that come on, along and be able to sell a knife for three or $4,000 or a handgun that's handmade for this much or a paint job or right. whatever because you know, there is a people there is people that want like, I want a badass helmet but I don't want it to be like everybody else's. Right. I want something that, that I feel like I have nice. Like I can go buy a badass perfectly made knife, I guess you would say for a couple hundred bucks or five or six hundred bucks from a knife known company. But I know the guy that struck the hammer or the, that struck the steel with his hammer right. to make this one. Like I know him and, and who he is and, and what he's about. I know what kind of energy went into this knife. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I it know changes exactly what you mean. The, the relationship with that product. Mm. Well, it's, you know? it, it creates a sense of community. And yeah. that's what, like, I saw this. Uh, thing on Netflix last night with uh, Dave Letterman and Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Dave Chappelle talked a lot about like the community that he lives in. Like how many people feel like they live in a community? Oh. Like you live in a neighborhood, but do you live in a community? No, I don't know anybody there. Right. I have my own community that I've formed with other people from right. other areas and we have our little community together. But and that's important. That yeah. is all. But the thing is, is like where you live 
Like it should, it should be like, you should feel like you can leave your house unlocked, that someone is watching, you know, that your neighbors, all of this shit means in the end, when you stack, when this all stratifies, when this is all fucking stacked on each other, all of this shit matters. Like Mm -hmm. feeling that, you know, you have a community. I think that it's, you know, I, I think that there is a uh, there is a mass system trying to tell the American people that they don't have that. Mm-hmm. And then you have the American people that are like, but I do actually have this. Yeah. And when you when you realize that, when you go like, I actually do have a community. I do have people that I care about. I do have this stuff. Then you start fucking relating how you feel to everybody and to everything. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Like, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I, I think that like, we're they're, not, it's like they're trying to put a wedge between you and the things in your life that, that do give you that sense of community to right. show you like, Oh, this might look like this, but what you're dealing with right now is white guilt. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, they're trying to, you know, they're, and I don't know what the, who knows what the goal is other than, we do understand, like, if you watch that The Social Dilemma on Netflix, we're right. talking about that. Yes. we I completely understand that, like, social media platforms are trying to sell things. And it's not that they're these evil companies that uh, came up with this way to ruin our world. Like, no, it's just no. their algorithms work so well that it tapped into something that nobody thought would until the this is the thing this is always the this is always the way this goes and it's what we were talking about earlier was that you have <clears throat> you have this fucking wonderful idea that is it, that is a genuinely it is a humanitarian idea peaceful it's fucking it can benefit people and you have a handful of motherfuckers that are like I can totally use this to fucking like, right. So this guy's eyelids shut. I mean, not to mention like social media itself kind of plays into your biases. So like the algorithm's set up to do that. Yeah. You know, because they want to keep you engaged. So like if you go around searching like Trump, then it's going to show you like later on down the line, you know, Trump fucking said this and fuck this guy. But right. if you do the other side and it's like Biden pedophile question mark, you know, right. and then it's like now you're going to see, you know fucking biden did this and da, 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 da. And, and it's in your ads it's in it's every so what do you hate more the fact that they're doing that or that there's simple-minded motherfuckers out there that that take that shit hook line and sinker well it's because they're not so there's this thing well one begets the other yeah because they're simple-minded motherfuckers there are people taking advantage of them right that's exactly. really the way you and, mean it. but i mean there's this thing that to like oddly tie this all in together uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about this thing, like he talked about this years ago, but he, he, he called it the God of the gaps. So like people will be like, if they don't understand something or can't, or, or too intellectually lazy to research it, they'll just be like, Oh, that's a miracle. God did that. You know, it's the right. same thing. Everybody's too intellectual, lazy, intellectually lazy, or too busy with their own shit to like really sit down and do their own research. So then it becomes the God of the gaps where it's like, now they're getting shit fed to them. And, you know, it's kind of like they're in their own bias loop. And so they get the same shit that they already believed sent to them on their phone, right there on their Facebook. They don't have to go looking for it. It finds them, you know, so now it keeps them in a state of ignorance. It reaffirms. It it reaffirms their biases. It reaffirms what they're like. So someone has played upon someone's fears Mm -hmm. and, and they just keep doing that. So to me, that kind of shit, like, you know, I, I saw this it was probably four months ago, five months ago. But it was it was a guy in India talking about like America said basically like America, keep it to fucking together. Like something collectively is trying to make you like the rest of the world. And the rest of the fucking world looks to America for freedom. Right. You know, and this is this is a super national like you could be like, oh yeah. I'm not saying, you know, super pro America. I'm saying that America is is one of the only places on the fucking planet that that you still can carry guns. That you mm-hmm. still can't that the people if they choose to can fucking revolt. All of the guns have and not to get into that whole fucking thing. But there are places 
the like that free will has been yeah it's confiscated yeah. like it's it's a done deal like you mm -hmm. you can throw rocks at people who have fucking missiles yeah like you don't you know to me and like when i hear someone talk about the second amendment like it's you know it's my right to and maybe we talked about this last time a little bit but it's like yeah having you know my right to have guns it isn't for hunting it's for you know to pr to protect myself against a tyrannical government well this tyrannical government unless you've got fucking drones yeah you don't have a measured response my friend because right. you're going to show up with a fucking gun of any kind and they're going to fly over fucking you know six blocks and annihilate fucking you and everybody like you if they want to Mm -hmm. Like, so you don't have, but we have numbers. Like we have a lot of people. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I try not to look at it too, like cynical. Like, well, that. yeah, too Armageddon. -y, like yeah. this is a fucking end, man. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. I mean, fuck off. Like nobody, nobody really wants that. Like, no. You know, you're a, even if you look at it from the point of view of the matrix, like you're a battery, like you're fucking, you're generating money for the fucking system. Being audited by the IRS, you understand that really you're, you're a dollar. Mm -hmm. Like if they lock you up, they're not making any fucking money. They're only spending other people's taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. on keeping you there. So the best possible outcome is to fucking fix you up and get you back in the game so you can fucking pay your taxes. Yeah. You know, it's to scare you into submission. Right. So that you pay your fucking taxes. Like, that's what they want to do, which is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> where's my fucking receipt for my tax dollars? Like, yeah. Why you know, can I write that off? <laughs> well, the thing is, is it like those motherfuckers show up and they want all of your receipts. Where are my receipts for what you're doing with my fucking money? Yeah. Let me see what you're doing while I'm paying this money. Where's my fucking receipt for what you're doing with this money? This isn't fair. I'll stop saying I'll stop saying that shit because the next thing you know, like get out of the audit. <laughs> we are on YouTube. Here comes another audit, Tim yeah. O'Keefe. <laughs> well, cool, man. We're uh, three and a half hours, man. Jesus. Man, we by. really know how to run our mouths. <laughs> yeah, that's something we're good at for sure. Well, shit, man. I I, I would have, you know. I would have said more about your magazine and shit. When's the new issue coming out? It's it's close. It's close. It's uh, issue thirteen. It's close. Cool. I, I actually picked up the the last one. I think I got twelve right here. Yes. Yeah, I didn't bring it because I knew that you. I had that one. Yeah. Yep. So man, these things are, I love them, and they got boobs in them. Yep. So yeah, I, I, you know it's it's uh. I love doing it. I love, <clears throat> you know, it's it's more to me than just a magazine. It is like earlier I said, like, if, if I would have taken this picture right here, you know right. what I mean? Like I would have, to see it right here would mean so much different to me. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, yeah, it does. You know, starting to like, I've been having like things printed that I've been shooting and it's like, man, like this, this feels different now. Yeah. Than like just seeing it on my phone or on the computer screen. Yes. So, you know, having a magazine or, or any of those things, like it, it's just like photos are supposed to do. It puts me back and like, man, you know that day I was really, me and my wife were fighting. Right. You know, it's crazy now that we're past that. And But seeing this photo puts me back there. Oh, man, this photo, man, I was banging this one chick around this time. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, shit. Now you're thinking about it. Now you're off in La La Land like, God. What's your Instagram? And if it's just, <laughs> yeah, and if it's just something that you're swiping through. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it doesn't, doesn't really give you enough time to to uh, assert a memory almost right. sometimes. Unless, you know, like sometimes I get in modes where, like, I, I like to use my Instagram for this sometimes is uh, my personal one because that's the one I've had the longest. Sometimes I'll scroll back and I'll just like, you know, because naturally we always put our good things up our good times our good memories or yeah, right. or whatever yeah so i'm like you know it's crazy i posted this right here at this time because at that time i was also dealing with all these uncertainties in life but this right here made me happy and now i'm seeing it and it's like making me realize that what i'm going through right now isn't that bad right you know it's like a good journal almost yeah. well you and it, I mean? you realize too that you're working through things like it's yeah. it is a sign of of growth like it, it ends up being a barometer like you look at it and you're like oh you know i <clears throat> i can get through adversity yeah that's confidence exactly right? 
<laughs> well, shit. All right, they can find you at? Uh, thestagmag.com. And that's where they can order the magazine. That's where they can order the magazine. They can get this badass poster that I just got from you it's, downstairs. It's sold out. It's that sold fucking, out already? That thing's sold out in like... That's I, a I good move, I put one man. aside for you. I put yours aside... That shit sold out in like six hours. Dude, that's a good move. Like doing, I mean, your photography is awesome. And like having that larger form of yeah. those prints, like, dude, that's a good move. And the man. quality of those. I you haven't, The quality is fucking pretty solid. Yeah. So I would definitely do more of that shit. Yeah. Well, I kind of Let me know when you get that. the OnlyFans, man. I'll fucking, you'll be the first <laughs> one. <to get> on. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Cool. Right on. All right. Thanks, bud. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I want to thank Tim coming out and uh, spending time here in the studio and laying down some uh, knowledge with us. You can check this podcast out in video form on our YouTube page if you want to check that out. If you want to support this podcast and hear exclusive podcasts that we do not release, release, sorry, uh, you can check out our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash fast life garage. And for a dollar a month, you can get our other content that we put out. Uh, our other shows that we're starting to work on and uh, other things like that so all it takes is a dollar you can donate however much you feel comfortable but it all helps us create this podcast and make it better also the other best way to help support this podcast is to check out our sponsors dream rides john on instagram and team dream rides.com paint huffer metal flake on instagram and paint huffer.com fast life 25 saves you 10 percent off thunder max efi on instagram and shop Fast Life saves you 10% off their amazing computers. Lexan Moto on Instagram and lexan-moto.com. Fast Life saves you 15% off, and you can't go wrong with a Lexan Moto. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets, my helmet of choice, and simpsonmotorcyclehelmets.com. Check them out. Electric Lighting Co. If you want to run that badass headlight I got on Instagram. And NAMS Custom Cycle Products.com. Offer code FL2020 saves you shipping. We'll be back with Monty Roach, a badass pinstriper who was coming through Dallas a couple weeks ago, and we laid down a pretty awesome podcast. Uh, ready to have him on. He's a performance bagger guy with me and the rest of the group crew. Uh, great dude. So I'm excited to have him on. Excited for you to hear it. We're going to release it here real soon. All right. See you guys later. Peace.